been walking through the Navy Exchange and wonder why all the Naval Pride and Heritage gear is horrifically ugly and you wouldn't actually wear it. Have you ever wanted some really cool gear and you just don't know where to go? Well, I got you, fam. Go to dgutsapparel.com immediately. Get yourself some Naval Pride and Heritage gear you'll actually wear in public. Uh, we're working on new designs all the time, open to ideas. We're trying to create a brand that uh, lets you display that pride, but doesn't make you cringe. Uh, also, if you're willing to and you're able to, please go to patreon.com slash podcast. Pick one of the five tiers and become a patron today. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Don't Give Up Ship Podcast. This is episode 140, uh, and it's we're, we're back with uh, Why Are Nukes Mad All the Time? Uh, so if you go back to, uh, I mean, it's a hot minute ago. I'll put the links in the description because the, I mean, the episodes are years ago. Um, but we did a few episodes uh, with this same dude when uh, he was anonymous for the episodes. He was a second class back then. He's now a uh, separated first class uh, nuke electrician. And so we did those those episodes, Wire Nukes Mad all the time, just discussing some of those kinds of things about the, the nuke experience and submarine specific in this case but you know like i mean i think a lot of it translates to uh the surface nukes as well but um we talked about a lot of stuff uh and they were really really popular episodes um i think just because i mean part of it was i th i want to say that the reactors critical might have shared them i can't remember um but yeah i mean it just like they they got a lot of engagement and uh I like I think this one will as well because it's it's more about the journey but also more specifically about uh like med boarding out of the navy which was the case um basically the the schedule and the and the shift work and all the craziness of of being a nuke and also being just being a submariner and and the way that the nuclear uh shore duty works where they go to like prototype and stuff where they're basically on a submarine tied to the pier doing shift work and standing watch just like they do on a regular submarine um you never get a break and so like disordered sleep led to other things and mental health things and and then the med board so um very very interesting story um got into a lot of stuff but uh, the, the story specifically about like the, the med boarding out of the Navy, like just like how crazy of a process that can be, how niche it is, how little people know about it, how difficult it can be, uh, blah, blah, blah. Right. Like it's, it's, it's its own odyssey and, uh, it was interesting to learn about it and it was really cool to, to catch back up, uh, with Kyle, um, because it's been a hot minute like it's i was like low-key like i don't i think we did some episodes together but i can't really remember what they were um so yeah it was the wire nukes mad all the time episodes again links are in the description if you want to listen to those first it has all his whole background and all that kind of uh, kind of stuff there uh and then yeah uh, I, I really hope you all enjoy this I, we had a great time we talked a bunch before and after as well so uh yeah good times hope you guys enjoy it check it out yeah uh, okay last last thursday i don't know about oh, nice so fucking hell so congrats thanks <laughs> all right man yeah it's like jump into your intro and then we'll fucking we'll jump into this med board ridiculousness <laughs> the the nightmare that is mm -hmm. um so we did we did the two episodes probably a few years ago now there was a yeah. why are the nukes so mad all the time um, okay yeah so we did okay yeah yeah at that all time right. i was i was just emn2 <laughs> was all i said uh yeah yeah since then, I picked up first, and now I'm just uh, Kyle, I guess, because I'm out yeah. of the Navy now. So. Fuck yeah. <laughs> it's nice, dude. I, how unburdened do you feel on a scale of it 1 was, to 10? It was real weird. That that yeah. last day when you go to, like, turn in your yep. badge and your gun sort yep. of thing. Yeah. I walked out of the building that I'd been working in, waiting for my med board to just get, like, finalized. But they pretty much had me turn my CAC in. One of the security mm -hmm. guys escorted me to the front door. Yeah. And then just kind of left me there. And I was like... You're like well, I'm a real boy just, now. I can just leave. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> this, this feels like a trap. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I turned my badges in, and then like uh, the kid at the they I, at uh, Group Nine, they have like um, it's a bunch of like Limdu people and and T Div people and whatever doing the quarter deck. And there's this uh, CS3 that he fucked his foot up or something. He was in a boot, um, but he was a cool kid. I'd met him during SMI or something, so he knew who I was, and uh, I 
like, hey, man, you want my bad shoulder? And I like threw it at him because they had like a little group nine, like, you know, the name tag fucks. I put it over the thing. Yeah. So, I don't know. Like he thought it was cool. And then yeah. I like high five some people and fucking walked out. And like <laughs> you have to walk uh, quite a ways to get like I had to park at the next. I don't know if you've ever been a banger, but you have to walk like a couple hundred yards to your car because there's just fucking no parking anywhere to the shock of absolutely no one. Yeah. And uh, I sw- dude. I bet I probably look like Joaquin Phoenix and the Joker. Like I was fucking laughing <laughs> and like could not stop smiling to the point that by the time I got to my car, my face hurt. Like it was weird, <laughs> dude, like uncontrollably, like just smiling. I wanted to like run or skip or something and do fucking cartwheels. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> like it was really weird. But like, yeah, I was like maniacally like smile laughing all the way to my car it was so weird but it was yeah, fucking I was, awesome i was trying to explain it to my <laughs> wife because she was asking if if it felt weird like the mm. night before my last day and i was sorry i mean it feels kind of like when you're transferring commands and you're yeah. like oh thank god i don't gotta deal yeah. with that anymore but then you go right. to a new command with new problems but yeah. now there's no new command i'm just kind of yeah. like no i don't gotta deal with Navy. yeah like <laughs> Right. And I feel like with time, it like sinks in too. And then you'll like, you, you'll have a moment probably. I mean, it, I've heard it varies for me. It was like a few months in where it started to, you, you started to at least realize like consciously that like, holy shit, I don't have to fucking go to work anymore. Yeah. This is awesome. <laughs> and then, uh, even, but then for me, like it took a, I mean, it took a while for me to like, get to a point where i felt like a real boy like totally mm-hmm. you know what i mean like it was a weird it's like shawshank redemption like adjusting to like civilian life after being in prison for that yeah. long it's like <laughs> i don't know like, i don't know how to do this dude but like i i probably in like the last i don't know like six months tops felt kind of like a, like okay uh yeah this is real like and i'm really like not going back and i'm really like and just like even like you, you make like the mental adjustment of like, um, uh, you're out of the Navy, but like you're, I felt like I was in this weird, like in between where I was like in limbo, like trying to like, yeah, okay. Like I've accepted okay. that I'm out of the Navy, but I still don't have know how to be a civilian. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, <laughs> and so I had to like kind of get comfortable with that. And so like, I think I'm finally getting to a place where I'm like, it feels like sort of normal to like be just, just a regular dude. A dude. Yeah. Yeah. Just a dude doing the thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this being my first week, I think the weirdest thing was waking up this past Monday whenever I woke up like seven yeah. or eight o'clock in the morning. And you have that initial, like, oh God, the sun's out. Oh, fuck. Like, I'm late. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I had that yeah. quick, like, oh, like knee jerk. And then yeah. once I like sat up in bed, I was like, wait, no, I don't. I don't, I'm not to do anything. <laughs> yeah. So that was fuck real this. weird. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah. So if people can go back to the wire nukes mad all the time episodes for your bio. We can just skip that. I I forgot that you said, dude. I'm like half awake. I'm working on it. I got caffeine. Yeah. No, you're you're good. Uh, so yeah. So the <laughs> so you've now med boarded out, and as of Monday, are a real boy. So like, yep. talk to me. So like, let's get in. Like, we talked a little bit before we started recording, but talk talk to me. And you can start wherever you want with whatever you want. But like, talk to me about what that was like. Uh, I mean, I'll pretty much just run through where it started and how the process yeah. was, I guess. And we'll just okay. build from there. Um, right. so I think, so the thing that they ended up med boarding me for was chronic sleep deprivation resulting in basically like severe panic attacks. I could have uh, got the fuck out of the Navy for sleep deprivation. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Bro, so, I have all the sleep issues. Oh, this no. is bullshit so, go ahead uh, like we talked about in the the first episodes i never really had a quote-unquote shore duty like okay. i i went to shore billets but they were for the prototype boats yeah. uh for training nukes yeah. so after i left my first submarine i went to a submarine being turned into one of the prototypes okay and that one left and went to south carolina i went over mm-hmm. to the submarine coming from south carolina and being decommissioned okay so the whole time I was in after a school was just either yeah. three or four section duty yep. with like port and starboard watches, 12 hour shift work underwater, like yeah. never like a real break. Yeah. So I think, Fucking I think my body Jesus. just said like, no, thank you. It's, I was yeah. about 
seven or eight years of that. And as, uh, as it does, man, like I did yeah. 21 years and I did proper shore duties each time, but like, yeah, I have both types of sleep apnea really bad. I had a pulmonologist tell me it's the worst sleep apnea they've ever seen in their fucking life. And Jeez. then I got diagnosed with insomnia and general anxiety disorder and all sorts of shit. So it's like everything you could possibly have to that. I know I have yeah. restless leg <laughs> syndrome. I have just like fucking everything you can have. That's going to fuck your sleep up. Um, but yeah, man, it's fuck. I feel like it's pretty typical for most, at least yeah. submariners, but it sounds like for, I mean, people that do regular ships too. It's like, yeah, it just fucks yeah, it up, man. And, and it's weird how your body just kind of, gives up i mean i'll get into that in a minute but okay. when it when it first started i i remember i was super prideful like yeah. this is a hit on my man card nothing's wrong with me yeah. like yeah after i'd been to the emergency room three times for severe panic attacks and i was just like mm -hmm. that's nothing like yeah i was just being a fucking idiot about it basically <laughs> but so uh it it all really like first started and i would say like early 22 mm -hmm. 2022 uh yeah. I just had COVID for the first time and like mm -hmm. gotten over it. And yeah. I still never got an answer to this day if that is what kind of sparked it, but I think it is. And I don't want to get down that rabbit hole. Of, yeah, maybe. You know, that's our uh, argument. But well, that dude, so, my cancer diagnosis is what pull, pulled the pin on all my mental health shit. And yeah. I don't even know why. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, it's just your body saying, like, no. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't that worried about it consciously because, like, at every step mm -hmm. of the way, they told me I was going to be fine and they were going to cure the shit out of me and all this stuff. Yeah. So, like, yeah, it's going to suck. I had to get brain surgery and do radiation. But, like, they're like, yeah, no, like, 98% chance or better, you're never going to have another issue again. And they were telling me that from, like, day one. So I was yeah. just like, I wasn't super worried about it. And I felt like, like, I was, I was freaked out by the brain surgery. But, like, once that was over, yeah, I mean, the rest of it's just like, whatever, like it, radiation. Mm -hmm. They're like, yeah, it's going to be a grind. It's going to suck every day for like th three or four months. And I'm like, oh, so deployment. Was, Got it. I'll yeah. be fine. Like, <laughs> yeah, I can, do, cool. I, I can do that. <laughs> and I get to lay in bed and like watch TV and take Oxy. OK, like oh, sign yeah. me up. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was like it, that. But that for whatever reason, man, like we went in and did my first radiation treatment. I was fucking ugly crying in the car and. My wife's like, what's wrong? I'm like, I don't know. Like, I yeah. fucking, I was just, <laughs> I don't know. I just couldn't regulate my emotions anymore. It was fucking weird. So, yeah, man, it's, it's shit just, sometimes it just, that's just what it took to, like, trigger it, you know? I don't know. Yeah, it's the, the proverbial straw on, on your back. Like, yeah, yeah. Something 100%. random. But, yeah. So, yeah, I, I got over COVID the first time. Uh, mm. and about a month later, I was, I was driving, not to work, not going anywhere special, yeah I'm pretty sure we we're just like going to a gas station or something to fill the truck mm -hmm. up like nothing weird yeah so i shouldn't have been like stressed out or anything uh but my hands started getting like kind of numb mm -hmm. like tingly feeling almost yeah and i was like that's kind of odd and also yeah. not not what i want to do while holding a steering wheel <laughs> right so, like, right <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what's going on with that and then my legs started getting numb and then i started getting in my head like what's going on so right I basically started like hyperventilating and my wife yeah. was in the passenger seat and pulled over and uh she basically like called an ambulance because she didn't know yeah. what was yeah. going on with me uh, and they took me into the ambulance but didn't go anywhere they took my vitals and said like right you're you're having a panic attack that's all this is yeah and i was like for what like what? right Nothing's happening like, why all right, yeah. sure <laughs> so yeah uh they let me send the ambulance for a little bit got me calm back down and the I remember the dude telling me you'll be fine in about 20 minutes. And I was like, yeah. okay, well, I don't feel fine right now, but sure. Yeah. And it was, God, I, I guess they really know what they're talking about. Cause I mean, it was 20 or 30 minutes later on yeah, the dot. Yeah. I just all of a oh, sudden yeah. like just better. I'm sure nowhere. they've, <laughs> they've seen it a million times. Cause like, yeah, I've heard a lot of people say that like, like I had what I described as anxiety attacks, which apparently aren't real. Yeah, but like sure. it was something if i mean yeah. okay it was a mild panic attack i don't fucking know but like i would have like these meltdowns where it like if i didn't have control over anything and like there was some sensational like some like physical sensations and stuff but mm -hmm. it wasn't like like i've heard people describe them as like they felt like they were having a heart attack like they felt like they were dying yeah mine weren't like that but they were definitely like I had to get the fuck out of wherever I was and like yeah. isolate myself and, and I could not control. Like I'd be shaking or like, 
uh the tingling stuff but milder and like heart rates mm-hmm. elevated but not like i didn't feel like i was dying i just felt like i was fucking melting i guess i don't know yeah and, yeah but i've heard people describe it as that so i'm sure those fucking those paramedics have probably seen okay. a fucking <laughs> million of those where people think they're having heart attacks and shit but it's just a panic attack yeah that was like that was the weird thing to me about the heart rate is that like I could tell it was up, but it wasn't mm. like pounding out of my chest. I was just yeah. very aware of my heartbeat and my yeah, breathing same. for yeah, no reason. Same. Like, yep. yeah, yeah. So You're like hyperventilating a little bit and like fucking yeah. your fucking hearts going like this. But it's not like, yeah, I didn't feel like I was having a heart attack or anything. I just was like, what is happening? You know, what I yeah. mean? like You're super is this what cocaine <laughs> feels like <laughs> yeah. the fuck. Like, <laughs> I don't think I did anything weird. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that was like a one off. Uh, I mean, at the time, it was just kind of like, well, that was fucking weird. Anyways, yeah. back to life, I guess. And then about s- six months later, I'll say mm. six months later, it was like late summer that same year, 22, uh, had taken some leave to go um, basically to like a lake house with my family, uh, yeah. some extended family and stuff. But we were going to be out there for a week. So again, driving to a vacation nothing weird should be happening (laughs) yeah and same thing started happening got like the numbness Mm -hmm. tingling all four limbs started feeling like nauseous not like i was gonna throw up but like that queasy uneasy feeling yeah Um, yeah. and then had to do the same thing where i pulled over to the side of the road and my wife and i both said like okay let's just hang out here for a minute yeah and just see if it passes like it did last time Right, and then I, f- I felt better after a few minutes. So I feel like your wife switched. needs to start driving places, dog. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> so we, we switched to where she was driving after yeah, that. Okay. But I was gonna say. it just it just didn't go away that time. I mean, it was like an hour plus where oh, I just damn. had these like random like I could feel my hands again, but yeah, then I yeah. start like hyperventilating, and then I mm-hmm. get in my head, and my hands would get numb again. Like mm-hmm. it was just a snowball nonstop yeah. thing. And uh, we eventually got to the the vacation spot we were going to and i just i went to the the house that my family was renting like found a couch <laughs> yeah never been in the house so i was just like i need a couch like yeah when I found one just laid down and i ate a, a bag of doritos just to like try to do something and take my mind off of what whatever was happening yeah and ended up feeling better like same thing about 20 mm-hmm. minutes after i got comfy yeah and so i was like all right well i'll just i'll go to medical after leave and mm-hmm ask them about it right uh so then i went to medical after that vacation and the god this guy's gonna (laughs) trigger me talking about him that's fine (laughs) we didn't have an idc on the submarine project i was on because we were a training ship being decommissioned so we were supposed to just be going to the shipyard branch clinic for anything medical related right which they hated because they apparently weren't aware that that was the deal made. So now all of a sudden they have this whole submarine crew, basically like a hundred something nukes that they have to take care okay. of. Okay. So yeah. they had a captain there that was just crusty old school doc. I mean, literally like, did you change your socks and drink water? Like yeah. that sort of thing. Um, yeah. We actually, we had a dude go there because he got in the middle of a dog fight. His dog started fighting another mm. one. Mm-hmm. He wants to go break him up, and one of the dogs like bit his forearm and like yeah. dragged down the skin a little. So mm-hmm. he had to go to the emergency room and got stitches and everything, got all mm-hmm. wrapped up. He went to go talk to this uh, captain over at medical and said that yeah. he needed an LLD chit so he didn't have to climb ladders and right. write logs and stuff, just be LLD for a week or two while the stitches healed. And apparently the the captain's response to him was, so you want me to write you a chit that says you can't do push-ups? Like, what do you want from me? There's like, I just serious? told you like, what I fuck? wanted from you, you <laughs> yeah, fucking man like, child. Like I've got this uh, yeah. old caster on my arm and st- whatever. What a dude. So I've heard about that interaction. So I went to go talk to him the first time. Uh, I went there. I was t- still had like a day or two left of leave from going on that vacation. And so I, I went there still on leave, hadn't shaved for like a week. So yeah. about where I'm at now, because I yeah. have been out for about a week. Right. And I was like, eh, I'm not going to shave. I'm, I'm not going to put you in I'm still on fucking, leave. If I'm on yeah. leave, fuck you, dude. Like, like I know it's okay. You're it's supposed to. Yeah, yeah, I know. Like, come on, dude. I'm on leave. And I was thinking, like, the stories fuck I've off. heard, this guy's kind of a dick. Like, yeah. nah, I'm on leave. Nah, I'm not doing it. Yeah. So I went to the appointment, and 
he came out of his office into the hallway and was like looking up and down the hall for his next patient who was me. Yeah. yeah. And he finally looks at me and he was like, are you payoffs or Schaefer? And I was like, uh, yeah, but I guess today I'm just Kyle because I'm on leave. Aha. Like, just trying to make a little <laughs> joke. And he just stared at me for like 20 yeah. seconds. Dude, it's like, like it's my fucking favorite when somebody who's like in the military but not really is like so fucking moto and like critical yeah. of every. It's yeah, I mean, like, like you're fucking faking it, bro. Like, what have you yeah. ever done? And I'm like, okay, there's a chance this fuck. I mean, he's an 06. Like, maybe he did some shit, but I'm just saying, like, most, I mean, he had a like, surface warfare pen, but like, yeah, where but did like, he get that? What did he do? You right. Know? Most of these dudes, fuck it. He was probably on a fucking carrier, like on a mobile city doing doctor things. You know what yeah. I mean? So it's like, like, fuck, come on, dude. You're, like, you're not, you're not G.I. Joe. Fuck, like, yeah, quit being <laughs> a fucking asshole. Like, we're out here doing the damn thing. Like, can you just fucking help me out? Like, and, and yeah. every, I've met a bunch of docs, like, and even like, like actual doctors that have done shit and they're all cool as fuck dude oh yeah i had a umo with like combat action ribbons and fucking all kinds of crazy shit yeah. <laughs> he was the chillest dude ever he was an 06 like just the chillest dude ever and the guy even the guy before him was fucking awesome so i'm just like mm -hmm. like come on dude like stop yeah you're compensating for something and it's not my fucking fault so quit being <laughs> a dick <laughs> Yeah, I was just trying to lighten the mood and also yeah. just feel him out and see if he was as much of a dick as people said. I fucking but, hate people like that, especially so he, in customer service fields. Like, yeah, just fucking it's, do your job, dude. Like, yeah. <laughs> you're not the uniform police. You're not the civilian closed standards police. Like, shut the fuck up and fix me. <laughs> God damn. Yeah, so we, we went to his office and I told him about what had been happening. And then he pretty much gave me the same response as the dude from the, the dog bite. Where he's just yeah. like, okay, so what do you want me to do about it? It's like, I don't you're know. Fucking what you're being paid for, maybe, you fucking like, douchebag. I don't know what I want to do about either, but <clears throat> something is happening. So yeah. like, I, I don't know what it is. And he was like, all right, well, how about we'll just send you to cardiology? Because it sounds like to me either you're having mild heart attacks or panic attacks. Now it's like, okay, well, I mean, why it was are those my two attacks, options? Yeah. Like, <laughs> Either my heart's yeah. failing or I'm just stressed out. Like, yeah. what do we do about the heart failing thing? He was like, I don't know, get a cardiology appointment cool okay well they can do so, dude i had uh, my first class idc did a ekg on me in the clinic here because mm -hmm. i was having like heart like i was having these weird like um i would go up i was in good shape good ish shape at the time and like i would go up a flight of stairs and my heart rate would start fucking spiking it, it, like in a way it shouldn't have for like going up 15 stairs you know what yeah I mean? like i wasn't in such horrific shape that that was yeah. hard <laughs> And like, uh, and then it would like, I'd get some chest pain, mild chest pain sometimes. So I was just like concerned and I'm like, bro, like I, this is kind of freaking me out a little bit. And so he hooked me up to like an EKG thing in the clinic. So there's like yeah. shit he could have done that he just didn't. Cause he sucked yeah. at his fucking job. <laughs> like, come on, man. Yeah. Anyway. They, I mean, they did EKGs by, by this point when I got my cardiology referral, I think I'd been in the emergency room like two or three times. Mm -hmm. And they did EKGs, blood panels, yeah. uh, piss tests, like everything, okay. just trying to see what my body was doing. And everything kept right. coming back completely fine. Right, so right. that's why they couldn't figure it out, you know, it's just panic attacks, I guess. It's like, yeah. okay, well, why? Like, <laughs> Yeah, like, but, okay, now what? I'm not just going to yeah. keep fucking doing this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the, so the uh, dude <clears throat> at medical, the captain guy, whatever, uh, got me the referral for cardiology mm -hmm. and the closest one they had was like six weeks out. Yeah. Cardiology yeah. called me the next day and said, you know, a little over a month until we can get you in. And right. I told them like, okay, I'm, I'm being told either my heart is failing or I'm having panic attacks. So what do I do in the meantime? Yeah. Like, can I get in sooner? Can I go out in town? I, I would right. like to figure this out. You know, like, yeah. the fuck is happening? Yeah. And uh, they basically said, if you have any more episodes, just go to the emergency room like, and wait for your <laughs> appointment. Like, thanks cool. i wasn't planning on doing that wow <laughs> yeah i wasn't so, already gonna fucking do yeah. so, so i i just waited oh, for that appointment God. um i don't think i went to the emergency room in the meantime i probably mm -hmm. did i don't i ended up yeah, going like man. 10 times in a couple right. months right but, uh so i went to that I appointment i would have stopped going just because they're not fucking doing anything it's not like they're were they yeah 
Did they ever give you like drugs to relax you or anything? Like, nope. or they just said, fuck, walk they, it off. They put me on a, like a <laughs> bed, whatever, take my yeah. vitals, do the blood test, EKG, mm -hmm. let me hang out for like two hours and then yeah. send me home. Oh like, yeah. I would have just stopped going. <laughs> I'm like, okay, yeah. I know what this is now and they're not going to fucking do anything. So, yeah. So, uh, uh they did the appointment, said they were going to give me a heart monitor to wear for two weeks. Yeah, I did that. I did that yeah. after I retired, the sticky one or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Fuck, you that thing itched, shave dude. your chest and... Yeah, yeah. it itched so that's, bad after, like, the first few days. I was like, The hair is growing like... back into the adhesive. It's... Ah, God. Ah, that's the worst. <laughs> so, so I wore the heart monitor for two weeks. Um, also, <laughs> at that time, they told me to cut out um, alcohol, caffeine, and nicotine. Just, like, so cut it out of my diet. you want me to die. <laughs> yeah, so it, when they told me that, I was like, okay, well... I don't Get really fuck, drink nerds. I still have to yeah. go to work. <laughs> it's like, I don't really drink that much caffeine. Like if I have a mid watch, okay. I'll have a monster. And yeah, yeah. on the weekends, my thing used to be, cause I still to this day, haven't started drinking caffeine again. I just started drinking no. a shit ton more water and good for you, I, dude. I guess. Yeah. Being I've mildly been, healthy. I've been <laughs> abusing caffeine for 15 years. Like good God. Yeah. They told me to cut out that and alcohol. I stopped drinking. And then mm. they said, cut out nicotine. And I was like, look, I'm not nope. cutting out all three. I, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's why you could get away with not using so much caffeine because nicotine's a stimulant. So yeah, yeah, probably, that was yeah. probably, that was probably, yeah. Cause dude, yeah. I, I've never been a nicotine guy, but holy shit. Oh, no, I know. I, I switched from a uh, vaping, like a choo choo abused. train to yeah. just doing the little, uh, the pouches, nicotine and pouches shit. Yeah. the tobacco free ones. But, yeah. So that was also probably good for me to stop vaping as much as I was, but yeah. Uh, pretty much just hung out with the heart monitor on and I was so in my head about it being my heart failing and it something went wrong. Yeah, you're freaking that out. I just yeah. sat on the couch. I didn't do anything. Like, yeah. uh, we've got essentially a petting zoo in our backyard. My wife has like a nice. goat farm yeah. thing she's trying to start. <laughs> so she was the one out there lifting all the feed bags and dealing with the animals. And I was just laying on the couch, like yeah. too scared to do anything. Uh, so I turned the heart monitor back in. I got the results back. And the, the cardiologist came walking into the room and basically said, like, you're totally normal, except for these readings right here. And I was like, well, I don't like how that sounds. That's a terrible way to start a sentence. Yeah. Yeah. He showed me, apparently there's a, I can't remember the acronym. It's pre preventricular something contractions, yeah. I think. Basically, your heart beats backwards every few beats. And apparently everybody's heart does it all the oh. time. You just don't okay. know it. I had no okay. idea that was a thing. So when he me told either. me, like, yeah, see, see these couple hundred readings of your heart beating backwards, basically. <laughs> like, I only had it on for two weeks. That's a lot. Yeah. That's concerning. And he was like, no, yeah. that's a pretty normal number, actually. Uh, but other than that, you're, you're fine. It's like, well, why would well, you even why bring that up? Why is it then? abnormal? Yeah. <laughs> like, so he, he freaked me out with that. But then uh, okay. I told him, like, basically the same thing about I've just been sitting on the couch, not mm -hmm. drinking, not, you know, using caffeine couple right. back on nicotine so what if i just go back to my normal daily life and get another heart monitor oh we can't do that you have to go talk to your medical provider <laughs> great i have to go talk to this captain again yeah. so i went talk to the captain again explained the same thing to him and he said well cardiology already cleared you once i'm not sending you back yeah it's like excuse me like okay sure whatever yeah so from there he didn't really know what to do with me so as far as like physical things. So he said, okay, let's get you a mental health appointment and see yeah. if it is anxiety related. I mean, if you got a good therapist, that's probably the move anyway. Cause they would refer you to all the things like, oh, yeah, that's what she ended up doing. The therapist okay, I got good. Yeah. after they, it took me like six months to get a mental health appointment, uh, which yeah, was fantastic. And that was only of because so the first appointment was made in like spring of 23 Somewhere mm -hmm. like early 2023 is when they made that first appointment. And it was like a month or two out. I was walking through the medical building, like the hospital, to get mm -hmm. to my appointment. My appointment was at 8. This is like 7.50. Yeah. And apparently they called me while I was walking. I didn't feel my phone in my pocket vibrating. So I walk up to the front desk and they're like, oh, we just tried to call you. Uh, your your doctor just left home sick for the day, so we're going to have to reschedule. Nah. Like, Fuck. Okay. <laughs> of course. Let's reschedule it. So I reschedule it for like another month or two out. Day of Jesus. that second appointment. The appointment was at like nine or ten in the morning. Yeah. Like 
like 6.30 or some shit, I get a call from the hospital. Hey, your doctor called out sick. We're going to have to oh reschedule. Oh, my God. It's like, are you fucking kidding? Okay, but <laughs> reschedule. Bro. Fine. So oh, that's wow. rescheduled for a third appointment. And same thing happened. Day of, they canceled. Are you so, fucking joking? Three times? No, three times. So that I'm day, I was... Bel- I fire was, that motherfucker. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I was hot. So I, I went to work, and I was... I was like all fucking spun up, went and talked to my CMC. And I basically told him like, if you don't know who to talk to, I'm just going to go start like screaming at people until they get yeah. me an appointment. Like, I, yeah. So he told me to fill out an ICE report, <laughs> which I had no idea yeah. what that was. Or, it's like a if Vic, you, like, so a lot of, I don't know if the Navy does it, but I know like the army has um, patient advocates. You can go talk to, to okay. that like, um and i don't know maybe other services do too the only reason i know this is because my friend eugenia was uh at one point she either told me about it or she was one i can't remember but she was an army officer that i met when i was at fort lee but um but yeah she was telling me that like i was having issues with like i was trying to get a torn labrum looked at and get like referrals and all the other and she was i was taking for fucking ever um and so she's like yeah you should file ice report and yeah it's like a what uh, it's like a feedback thing right like a complaint so yeah it's like a survey thing so basically every every base when you go do an ice report every base is listed under there like a drop down menu so you pick the base that you have a problem with and then you pick the specific facility on that base that you have a problem with and it's the first like page of it is basically you know zero to ten extremely dissatisfied mm-hmm. extremely satisfied yeah. these things going on that bitch ass captain at that clinic uh, <laughs> apparently i found out a couple months ago like well after i was done dealing with him apparently he has a investigation against him now oh i'm, so, I'm shocked yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm shocked <laughs> <laughs> so uh at the end of the ice report though they give you like a two or three thousand character box and oh, just say hell yeah have at let's it. go so I, I i'm went about off. to nuke the shit out of yeah. this <laughs> <laughs> i i put every problem i've been having like yep. fully detailed listed out and then uh <laughs> at the end of it i think it was i think it was H- honia when he took over his mm-hmm. nick pond he said that thing it's about actually mental health fun, fun fact his name's honey like Honey. if you okay. imagine like H O N I E, like how you'd pronounce that. Okay. I, I, dude, I was saying the same thing for the longest time and I got corrected yeah. by somebody that knows him. And I was like, really? I'm like, that's how you say that shit. And they're like, yeah, his name's Honey. I was like, all right, fuck. All right. Yeah, Why'd they spell that, it that way? I don't that know. That guy. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Honey. Potato <laughs> with a face is what I call him. Uh, I'm sure I, I'm joking. He does look like a potato with a face, but also I've heard he's a really great dude. So yeah. But he, when he first took over as Mick Pond, he made some, I don't even know, we could, announcement, quote, whatever, mm-hmm. saying that, like, we need to get better about mental health. Yeah. Uh, well, so I, ever, they've been saying that shit for yeah. three but it, was, it was something that was new enough to be relevant yeah. to quote. So I, yeah. I quoted that at the end of me flame spraying them for like six paragraphs. <laughs> and then I put, you know, if, if the Mick Pond's so worried about it, why aren't you guys? Like, why are my appointments oh! being canceled? Why is it taking months? And then oh, the, I like it. I the real, like it. Uh, the real spicy thing I Fucking put at the end, which I, I almost didn't put in there because I was like, this might get me reported for something. Fuck it, but Let's whatever. Go. So I put something in that basically said like, I'm not gonna, you know, on the live myself. I'm not a danger to myself or others. But if I was and I was being treated the way I am right yeah, now, I yeah. completely see why people go that route. Like yeah. after everything I've been Scorched through. Scorched fucking and earth. Then just, yeah, and that oh, I like then, it. Yep. It's yep. three hours later. I got a phone call from a Tricare <laughs> clinic out in Virginia Beach. Hey, your appointment's Hell at nine yeah. AM tomorrow. Oh, <laughs> got him. I like it. I like it. So, um, dude, so the I ice did, report works. I mean, I, yeah. <laughs> hey, fucking go do your ice reports, kids. I yeah. uh, I did. I'm the same way, dude. Every time, if you give me a fucking feedback mechanism, oh fuck, yeah. stand by, like. When I was at the chief selection board, when I was a board member, it was such a fucking dumpster fire there that like I was I was so pissed that probably once a day I would have to walk out of the panel room in the building. And ju- I was like pacing up and down the sidewalk. I was so fucking pissed off uh, just about like it just it's it's so fucked. And I can't get into like the grimy details, but like yeah. still because like there's NDAs and shit. But like um, 
but like I did an episode on it back then about what I could can and could talk about but like it just it's such dog shit and at the end they give you like a hey let us know how we did like (laughs) and it's like a fucking box bro the whole panel room was pissed at me because I was taking fucking forever because I was writing a book (laughs) and for whatever reason their fucking 1980s technology when you're typing the feedback you cannot use punctuation you cannot use capital letters and there was one other thing so like it ca- I had to open a fucking word document and like type it and then I paste it in and see if it was right and it would like reject it and then I had to do it again because I had to retype it once. Jeez. Yeah. yeah and it's, but I'm like, nope, fuck this. I don't give a shit, bitch. I'm getting all this shit. I'm on there. a mission. <laughs> Bro, I was in there forever and they're like, God damn, Will's over here writing a fucking book. And I'm like, Yeah, I am, so fuck off. But I never heard anything about it because one of the things that happened was really like shady. Like not like it it didn't well i guess it could have affected a guy's promotion i don't think the guy got promoted anyway so it was like the the what would have been the intended shady effect didn't work i guess but it was like unethical fucking against policy like it was fucked up and like i mean to the point where when it happened we were in the tank when it happened and when it happened i mean you could feel the air get sucked out of the fucking room and everybody's looking at each other like, what the fuck? (laughs) And I like, I was fucking hot. I was like, you can't fucking do that. Um, It ended up not affecting anything, but at the same time, I was just like, that shit needs to get fixed right fucking now. And nobody talked, like everybody just act like it didn't happen. I was like, nope, fuck you, dude. And I put it, I put it in the thing too. Like, I was just like, this is so fucked up. Um, God. but yeah, it was, it was, I just, yeah. Anyway, sorry. Fucking tangent. Right. Yeah. If you, yeah. Ice reports where kids go do them. And then yeah, also they definitely do also just feedback, man. Like if you get the opportunity to provide feedback and I know a lot of people like on submarines, I think it's pretty typical to have like the electronic anonymous CO suggestion yeah. box. My understanding is that it actually is anonymous. We used to sit in the chief's mess and like, or Cobb would be reading them and he wouldn't know who they're from and they'd sit there and like speculate. But like, and I'm sure the ITs could like figure out who it is if they wanted to, but yeah. to my knowledge never did. Um, but yeah, it's like, I know a lot of the sailors don't trust the anonymity there because it's on a computer. So you could just figure it out. But those things, I mean, they work when the chain of commands receptive to them, but then the other ones like an ice report or like even like a Simeo survey, Like your triad might not take it seriously, but if you light that fucker up enough, your triad's not going to be the relevant party. It's going to be like your ISIC or the first flag command and the first flag officer in your chain of command. So it's like somebody else holding the paper off like, hey, what the fuck is this? Yep. (laughs) yep. And trust me, like if you got to really you got to go hard. But like for a Simeo survey anyway, to for that to to get for a DX survey to get the attention that it needs to. But like if you go hard enough that fucker's going to go up and you're going to have that CO and, and CMC and everybody's going to have to answer some hard questions to at yeah. least the Commodore, if not higher. So yeah, the feedback mechanisms work. You just, you really got to do what you did. You know what I mean? Like you got to be real fucking honest about it and, and very honest and yeah. specific. Like yeah. you, you can't just go in there and just this say sucks. like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the hospital, they treat guys. me good. Like, yeah, you, yeah, exactly. What I did was I gave like every appointment I had, Mm-hmm. Uh, I went back through the call list on my phone and said mm-hmm. my appointment was at this time. I got a call at this time saying yeah. it's canceled yeah. this many times in a row. It's been yep. this long. Like you have to build nukes. a story and give it evidence. I like yeah. fucking <laughs> nukes. I love that shit, man. They got receipts, bitch. They know yeah. how to do logs. Let's go. I fucking love it. That's awesome. Yeah, I think I think that's probably mm-hmm. like one of the side effects that I really enjoyed from. The amount of nuclear training is oh, if yeah. I get in an argument with somebody now, mm-hmm. if I really want to get into it, I got motherfucking receipts, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good shit. I love it. All right. So, uh, see, so yeah, I got the ice report. Got the appointment. Yeah, got the got appointment. The appointment, got the appointment. Uh, for the next day at 9 a.m. So, mm-hmm. went to that appointment, and that was just like the most eye opening thing talking to a civilian provider working at a TRICARE clinic basically telling her how my experience had been so far and her just being oh, like interesting. what the absolute fuck like yeah yeah they did i what? had a, mil- I had a military what? provider but like 
military providers, it's like they weren't in the military. They're just wearing a fucking uniform to the office where they do psychology things. Yeah. So it's like, I mean, the I went and saw a psychiatrist uh, for medication at one point, and that dude had been around a long. He was like a commander, um, and he had like a ribbon rack. So I don't know if he was like prior enlisted or what, but like. Um, most of those, but like the, the psychologist I saw, like those, like my therapist, that mm-hmm. dude was like an O three 3 that like pretty sure he got commissioned as an O three 3 cause medical, but like, yeah, I mean that dude, like no warfare pen, just never done anything else except show up to this clinic and sit in a room. So it's kind of the same, but it's interesting yeah. that it's a, it's a, it was a civilian provider. Yeah. So I, I wasn't expecting it either, but Yeah. No, she was she was really good. She she was blown away by the the lack of yeah. appointments I had so far. So right, uh, right. She after the first appointment referred me to neurology, mm-hmm. basically saying like if cardiology cleared you, the last physical yeah. thing they haven't looked yeah. at is, is your brain. Like what's that's going a good on in your head? Yeah, and that's why I said that. Like they referred me to because like my <laughs> they basically just like the people that they referred me to basically just said, well, you just your sleep is fucked up. But they, yeah. <laughs> it was like a some type of neurological where they put me through all these tests where I was doing like puzzles and shit and like memory okay. stuff. And like, I forget what it was called, but it was it was really interesting. And like basically just seeing if it was a neurological issue um, mm-hmm. or if it was um, something else. And then when I when it got done, they were just basically like you're I guess I tested like on the low end of normal, but they're like. We like if he was not just if his sleep wasn't disordered, he probably would have tested on the high end of normal. So like it's just sleep. But yeah, I mean, my that was my therapist, though, like referring me to all this shit. Yeah. Like he referred me to somewhere else, too. Like, yeah, he's fucking awesome. Yeah. But yeah. So she got me the the neurology referral, which I don't, I don't remember how long after that was. It's probably like another month or something. Um, But they they basically just ran me through uh i can't remember the acronym the one where they hook all the shit like you're in the yeah. matrix all the little leads yeah. all over the head like an fmri and stuff or no you like, just uh, it... just lay on a, a bed like a flat oh, okay you know doctors yeah, i don't know what that's thing. i think eeg i think yeah I maybe know. uh I don't know. they ran me through one of those and then i had to go back about two weeks later and do one sleep deprived just to see if the sleep stuff was an issue. <laughs> Bitch, I was sleep deprived so, the first time. Yeah, yeah. Jokes on <laughs> you. <laughs> so the the sleep deprived one, he told me the the appointments at eight a.m. You have mm. to be here. Uh, you have to be awake for at least three hours before the appointment and getting less than three hours of sleep that night. So, so normal I, night. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Being on duty. Got it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. A duty yeah. day. Thanks. Yeah. Like, <laughs> So I uh I just stayed up in the living room playing uh Diablo four had just recently come out. I just played Diablo four till like two in the morning and nice. then I was gonna like sleep until <laughs> yeah, I was gonna try to sleep from two to five so I could get the three yeah. hours and then if I'm up at five, the appointment's at eight, I'm up for three hours. Figured yeah. you know, math makes sense. Yeah. And I just laid in bed staring at the wall, freaking myself yep. out about oh my god, is something yeah. wrong with my brain. <laughs> so, right. Didn't sleep at all. But <laughs> yep. Sounds but, like what I would have done. Yeah, it was definitely <laughs> sleep like deprived. Fucking... But uh, they did that, and then the results from those two appointments came back completely normal. And so the the doctor was talking to me and just trying to figure out what else they could look at. And he basically started asking me about <clears throat> my backstory in the Navy and yeah, what my normal job is like. So I was trying to explain mm. being a submarine electrician to him and, like, the nuclear oh everything. Bro, like... Of all the jobs on a submarine, like one of my best <laughs> yeah. friends on my first boat was a nuke electrician. Mm. And the other was a nuke mechanic, but like, like probably a gang first and then nuke, elect- then electrician, like the jobs I would never fucking want on a submarine. Oh, there, there's I a think, reason we're so tight with a gang. <laughs> I think a gang's at the top of the list, but a fucking yeah. second place with a bullet is fucking being a nuke electrician, bro. Cause you own yeah. everything. If my oven breaks, I'm dragging you out of the fucking rack. Like yep. not to mention all the nuclear shit and watch standing. And fu- I'm like, God damn dude. Yeah. <laughs> I would never, ever want to be an electrician, but yeah, yeah, it was, 
I God mean, we, bless we talked on the first two episodes we did about my experience on my first boat and everything as far as like yeah, leadership, yeah. the, the yep. job itself, I, I grew to like it eventually yeah. like it cause you, you get to take pride in it, but I, oh, yeah, well, yeah it sucks. It's, it's I've heard hard. that it's re- it's very rewarding, and a lot of guys enjoy that. Like, if you're gonna be a nuke, being an electrician's the best, or something. Which I would probably argue ELT is the best because they don't do a whole lot of because they don't do anything. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, I was trying to give them a little credit, but the, no, yeah. the, the numbers are made up and the specs don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like the. I've heard the the opposite too. Like I, for from me perceiving it, it was like fuck that. I wouldn't want that job. But then I've heard I've had a lot of electricians telling me that like like yeah, it's fucking really difficult, and there's a lot of days you want to blow your brains out metaphorically. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, but on on the flip side, it's like they were like yeah, it's super fulfilling because they do get to fix a lot of shit, and there are like you're you're needed, you're valued because you're in demand because you fix fucking everything. So it's like yeah, I mean. Yeah, it's Makes it's sense. rewarding after the fact. Like when you're yeah. when you're elbow deep in some pump trying to figure yeah. out why <laughs> it won't pump for like yeah. twelve hours, and yeah. then you go onto your eight hour watch, right. and then like those days are just like God, just fucking kill me now. Like <laughs> I'm so done with this. Like yeah, I I don't care if this pump just evaporates right. when right. I turn around. But then you know months later you you like laugh about it. you're like yeah that was really yeah. shitty, but yeah. we figured it out because it was this mm-hmm. thing, and now I know that in the future. Right, right. So. Yeah, so I was trying to explain to the neurologist the job of a, a sub electrician, and I basically got to the point how I started this episode saying I never have had a shore duty. I've been yeah, yeah. three or four section duty, twelve hour shift work underwater, yeah. doing training. Like, yeah, I've, I've never gotten a break Dude, other than taking. Thought you were leave. fucking lying. He's like, like There's, it, "This is bullshit. Dude, There's no dude, way." When, this I, is when I told him that, he just stared at me for a couple seconds, and he was like, "So when do you get a shore duty?" I'm on shore duty right now. Yeah, yeah. So you're I'm not doing that schedule. Duty. Yeah, it's like so no, you're not I doing am. that schedule. No, I, yeah. I am every day. No, I am still. every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'm on shore so, duty. Yeah. So as soon as I told him me. that, he, he was just flabbergasted and yeah. uh, basically said, "Are right, your options are because we can't find anything, go back to being a sub electrician, or get med boarded and see if yeah. they figure it out." And I was like, well, like, honestly, man, at, at this point, it's been a little over a year that I've been dealing mm-hmm. with these random episodes and nobody knows what's going on. And right. I'm just, I'm done. Like, I yeah. don't think my body wants to do it anymore. I'd yep. actually, uh, right before all this started, I just reenlisted. So I was supposed to be out to was- like... 12 or 13 yeah. years. I was just was about like, to ask that. Like, how long did you have until just normal EAOS? But yeah, yeah. Oof, big um, oof. <laughs> if I hadn't re enlisted when I got sent up for med board, I, I would have already been out of the Navy. Oh, so okay. I guess it's good and bad because I had re enlisted. I had more time to get these appointments and everything. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell myself it's good. But <laughs> uh, yeah, I was supposed to be out to like 12 or 13 years or something. Um, yeah. I ended up total. I ended up doing ten years, two months. So okay. I did did a good chunk, but yeah. Uh, I I basically said like I think my body's done, uh, and I I just I want to go the med board route because even if they don't mm-hmm. med board me, maybe I'll get more appointments and figure something out. Right, right. So he sent me up for med board and started that nightmare of a process. That's just <laughs> like awful. Um, the whole time I was up for med board, waiting for that to come through, mm-hmm. I. I was denuked. I wasn't allowed on the boat because oh, I oh, forgot darn. to mention I, I had a panic oh, attack no, on watch. Stop! Like <laughs> yeah. you go on the submarine. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> the the last major episode I had, I was on watch yeah. as the uh, shutdown electrical operator. I'm and surprised they were letting you stand watch, knowing you were having panic attacks. Well, like, that's fucking the wild. The chief I had at the time was also just like hot dog shit. Uh, yeah. I talked yeah. about in the the second episode we did. I. I don't know if you remember making the quote. I still remember it because we referenced uh-huh. it like me and my buddies at work while like I was still there. But the first interaction I had with him, he told me that it wasn't his job to advocate for me. Oh, yeah. And then your yeah, response yeah. was I would rip his fucking soul out of his chest. <laughs> <laughs> I would have so. fucked that dude's face off. Yeah, his yeah. face would have melted off his head like because yeah. I would have just flame sprayed he him. He made senior a few weeks ago. Of course he did. He's a fucking yep. nuke. You just have to stay in and keep breathing <laughs> yeah. like. 
qualify edmc okay yeah. track he's you a, know what I mean? he's a like, surface electrician but yeah, oh, he okay. made senior somehow yeah but, well it's even easier on the surface fleet man like i say that about like like god bless my cs's i love y'all but like if you just stay in and keep breathing you're gonna make master chief like that's mm -hmm. just how that works and it kills me inside because like there are I, I there are surface chiefs that i'm really close with that are shit hot that are doing all the things and doing them the way that i would do them if i was on surf fleet and they're getting promoted and they're doing well right but then there are people that like i wouldn't piss on if they were on fire and they're making master chief too and it's just like it kills me because it's like yeah so the people that are killing it and and like basically pulling that person's weight are gonna fucking make it too like so what like why do they it's like there's no incentive to work hard uh, like on yeah. that side of things just because there's quotas and shit and it's like that's it fuck i get it i guess i think the system's fucking broken fundamentally but like yeah it kills me inside to watch because like yeah on the sub side it's fucking almost impossible like to make Ma like me making mastery before i retired one was shocking because i'm me but two <laughs> like not that i not that i didn't earn it but i got a big fucking mouth like i obviously like look what i yeah. did right but like I mean, I, I had this big mouth the whole time I was in the Navy, too, like, and I was using it. So I was just shy. I thought for sure, like, best case scenario, I retire a senior chief, but probably a chief. Because um, I'm like, they fucked up and promoted me to chief. And so now I'm just like, all right, let's take this shit out for a spin and see what it can do. <laughs> and so, like, I was using and abusing it. And I thought that was going to keep hold me back. And I think I, a lot of it was luck. I mean, I think nine if i lived my life again nine times out of ten i would have retired a chief but i just got lucky and there were people in positions that appreciated the way i did things throughout throughout you know so they like advocated for me but um but yeah man it fucking hurts my soul to watch that kind of shit happen like and it happens yeah. on the sub side too but like not as frequently um yeah like there was a we dude definitely still see it yeah there was a dude <laughs> there's a dude i did an smi I'm not going to say the boat's name. God bless. They knew who they are. <laughs> um, I wrote like, we wrote like a 19 page SMI report after, I mean, we unsat at them. It was fuck. And the EDMC was in the room for the debrief. Cause the cob had to be somewhere else, which tells you all you need to know about the command. Like he didn't show mm -hmm. up for a major inspection debrief, but it's just yeah. an SMI. Yeah. It's just yeah, an SMI. Be there. It's nothing. Important. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> but when we route a 19 page unsat report, yeah, the fucking that's... Admiral is talking about it. So like, I like, I sat in on a meeting when I got home with the, with my Admiral. Um, but it was the EDMC. He's like, this is the bloodiest inspection report I've ever seen. And that EDMC had been <laughs> around a long fucking time. He was a crusty old guy. Um, so we did that and like, but like during the sanitation inspection, this guy was on watch and I mean, they thawed out chicken overnight in one of the kettles. It was 60 something degrees when the, I had, I made the dock temp it. Um, so, I mean, it was garbage. It would have fucking yeah. made people sick. Yeah, there that's... was moldy bread in the locker. There was fucking expired shit all over the mess decks. There was, well, I the, mean, the it, mold's like, just extra flavor, bro. That's... It was like, it was like a <laughs> training video on how to fucking suck at sanitation. Like the galley. I mean, there was cross <laughs> like really like, like a, a picture and people are doing things comically wrong. And they're like, what's wrong with this picture? That's what it was like in this galley. And I was just God. fucking beside, I asked, like, as I'm walking through, like, I asked the chief, I'm like, are you fucking surprised I'm here? Like, did you <laughs> not know I was going to do a sanitation inspection? Like, are you Is fucking kidding me with this like shit? <laughs> yeah, I was fucking, there was black mold under the deep sea. So it's a, it was a Ohio class uh, submarine, black God. mold. There's like a grease trap under the, under the hand wash sink. And it had like four, four out of fucking 20 bolts in it. And it was just like leaking fucking everywhere. And there's black mold everywhere. And they knew because they had shoved terry cloth under there a bunch of times. That was also moldy. So like they knew yeah, it was You gotta give leaking. it something to grow yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, it was the, it was such a dumpster fire. God. And the, the, the guy that was the galley watch captain, when I was doing that sanitation inspection that thawed the chicken out that way, that had the black mold under the sink and he was aware of it, that did all kinds of other dumb shit, that guy made chief. And I was just like, if you ever oh. needed evidence <laughs> that the system was broken, yeah, this is that. it. Because like that dude should have gotten fucking wrecked he should have at least got a punitive letter of reprimand if not gone to captain's mass for what happened during that inspection 
the the chief should have went to captain's mast i mean it was fucking negligence on a scale i've never fucking seen and yeah. and no one gave a fuck like i mean the admiral cared and like i had i known at the time like i would have told them they weren't allowed to serve food on the submarine like i got home and my admiral was like if you ever encounter that on inspection again you have like i'm giving you my authority to tell them they are no longer allowed to serve food on the submarine i'm like god damn that would have been so cool to like fucking <laughs> flex on these bitches and be like shut down because i went up to the inspection team i said do not eat on board this fucking submarine like i was like do not eat food here and they're like, are you fucking kidding me? And I'm like, no, I'm like, <laughs> do not eat on board this ship. And uh, I like we were all just bringing snacks and shit every day because I was just like, I was I say, just eating pop tarts and the little no, mini cereal boxes. Even, bro, I didn't eat anything. I might have oh, eaten some fruit possibly, but I probably washed it. Yeah, <laughs> it was rough. But anyway, that to go back like the promotion system. Holy yeah. shit. It's broken. But yeah, so anyway, the, the chief yeah. I had at the time. uh I had that on watch, like bad panic attack. Um, mm. I was sitting. So just background for people that don't know, you shut down electrical operators yeah. in junior watch in the engine room when you're in port. Mm. And then you're shut down reactor operators, a senior guy. Yeah. So I was sitting next to was another electrician, uh, one of my buddies. And I was telling him, I was like, man, I'm just, I'm starting to not feel good. <clears throat> like, I don't think it's another episode or like, yeah, I ate something bad, but like right. my stomach doesn't feel good. And, I'm just going to go take a walk around the engine room real quick and yeah. try to figure it out. I didn't know you guys were allowed to walk around the engine room. The, the shutdown electrical operator is allowed to rove. Oh, uh, okay. Do you the guys shut down react a roving operator watch. has to stay maneuvering. There's a mechanic There's a... roving watch too. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Got it. So I, I just went to go take a walk around the engine room. Uh, I went down to lower level. Um, there's this big giant AC vent pointing like right at the ladder. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I just went I down the ladder. Things, oh, I, know, I miss them. <laughs> the big round so ones, much. dude. I just yeah. stand in front of those sometimes. <laughs> but I be That's back the there. Yeah. Best AC you'll ever have in your oh, life. Oh God! <laughs> it's just like, yeah, fucking love that thing. And so I, I went and sat at the bottom of the ladder, just blasting my face with cold air, trying to see if I feel better. And I sat there for a few minutes, and I started feeling better. And I went to go climb up the ladder, and I still remember I like grabbed the ladder, and then mm -hmm. just pain shot across Ooh. my chest. And I was like, nope, not okay. Nope. Not, not nope. doing this. <laughs> so I, I made up the ladder. I went to maneuvering. I told the shutdown reactor operator. It's like, hey, man, I'm I'm going to the hospital. Like, I'm going to go to the barge and just tell them to call me an ambulance. Well, you, you can't leave the boat. You're on watch. And I You're was like, I don't know if I'm, I'm having, like, I might be I fucking, I'm having a dying, fucking heart dude. attack. Yeah. yeah. Like, like, fuck you. Shut up. You got yeah. it. We're both electricians. You know how to run the electric You'll plant. be fine. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> So I went over to the barge. Our EDMC was the uh, engineering dude petty officer that night. Probably the supervisor. had a fucking meltdown, too. So, 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 oh, God, the fucking room, ah! that, was, that was his first question. I went and told the barge watch, you need to call me an ambulance and then yeah. wake up the uh, engineering petty officer and the engineering duty officer. Yeah. So they both came down and the ambulance was on its way. EDMC's first question was, well, if you're up here, who's standing your watch? And I was like, dude, I just told you I might be having a fucking heart attack. Like, yeah, I don't care who's on watch. It's like almost says, right. Name, you know, my boy's yeah. down there. Yeah, he's a big boy. He's got it. We're both electricians. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't matter. It's not he's even like, a okay, real yeah. submarine, bro. Calm down. Yeah, that too. <laughs> it's it was fake. To get the, it was waiting to get the fuel pulled out. It's not yeah. doing anything. There's yeah. no propeller. It can't even right. go out to sea. It's like, like <laughs> so, it'll but, be fine. So the, the hospital, uh, Took me in again that night for, God, I'd say probably like three or four hours. Like it was like two in the morning by the time I got out. Did you get and, like uh, fucking DRB'd the next day? <laughs> no, no. I mean, I, so that real shit chief I had at the time, I yeah. messaged him on Facebook. And when I was leaving the hospital, I messaged him when I was going <laughs> there and told him like, hey, I just had another episode on watch. I'll keep you updated. Yeah. And I messaged him when I was leaving and said, they just let me go. Same thing as usual. EKGs were fine. Blood panels were fine. They don't see anything wrong. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, they even uh, did like an ultrasound of my heart mm -hmm. to try to mimic whatever cardiology could do because it was the middle of the night and cardiology wasn't open. Right. They, they couldn't find anything. So I, yeah. I text that chief this like wall of stuff on Facebook and just said, this is everything they did. I don't know yeah. what's happening still. I'm not coming back into work in the morning because it's two or 3 a.m. I've yeah. got 
an hour drive back home. Probably My wife like, would come to the hospital. Malingering. So, fucking, yeah. you're UA. <laughs> you know, like, so, fucking My wife would come back to the hospital to, you know, hang out with me and make sure I was okay. But yeah. she was going to drive us home. And I, I lived like an hour away from the shipyard. Mm-hmm. So I was like, by the time I get home, it's going to be about three or four in the morning. I'm not going to be there for muster at 730. Like it, it's not happening. Right. Let right. me know if the captain wants me there, basically. Otherwise, I'm staying I home. St- I still wouldn't have been there. I would have been like, I'll be there on this the next day and yeah. fuck it. Like, whatever. So I, do what you got to do. <laughs> <laughs> I got home and went to bed. I only slept for like a couple hours because I just mm. I couldn't stay asleep. I kept freaking myself out and waking yeah. myself up. But I woke up around like six or seven in the morning. And his response on Facebook was to change our messenger chat theme to the hippie tie dye theme. And then that makes the quick react emoji a peace sign instead of a thumbs up. So he changed it to the like tie dye theme and then sent a peace sign with no message. And I screenshot it and I sent it to the EDIB group chat. And I was just like, I'm going to fucking kill this guy. What like, fuck? <laughs> that, I mean, that wasn't on my bingo card, but all right. Yeah, that's. That's like the type of duty is, but hey, mate senior. So, you know, yeah. Uh, on a, I wrote like a list of oh, yeah, chain of events. So I can make sure I keep <laughs> everything in line. Of course you did. I'm a nuke at heart. All right. Leave me alone. Yeah, I know. I know. It's good. <laughs> no, it's fine. I'm an organization um, freak most of the time with certain things. Okay. Yeah, there it is. <clears throat> all right. So, see, so yeah, I had that on watch episode. Um, and then after that, they, pulled my nuke NEC Mm -hmm. and well, they pulled the nuke NEC because from the mental health appointment I had, they prescribed Mm -hmm. me like anxiety meds. Yeah. Um, that's enough to get you denuked. Uh, the type of medicine it was. Yeah. Oh, pro pran pro Oh, okay. Uh, but yeah, apparently it's enough to get you denuked, um, while you're taking it. So you get denuked while you're taking it. You have to take it for 30 days to see if it makes your symptoms better. And then you have to be off of the medicine for 30 days and show that you're stable, Yeah. which I, I might have that a little bit wrong, but, uh, by the time it came around for them to say like, okay, are you better now? I was already getting sent up for med board. So yeah, I never yeah, got yeah. to see the end of that. Gotcha. So I was already, uh, told I wasn't allowed on the boat anymore. And then shortly after I got denuked. So then when I get sent up for med board, mm-hmm. uh, they basically said like, okay, well, you're just going to be a dude like yeah didn't didn't have to go to inch depth training anymore which is dope nice. didn't yeah. have to take the monthly cte Can't like the, on the test boat. i mean fuck yeah. like, it was it was pretty sweet uh stand quarter so, deck watch no oh, yeah the only watches left were a large <laughs> quarter deck watch or the uh cask on watch up at the yeah. top of the brow yeah. the alarm system guy oh yeah because you probably qualified a gun and shit so yeah I wouldn't even have that. We had the uh, shipyard MAs had to be our armed really? watches because okay. we didn't have any weapons on board. Oh so, yeah, because it's yeah, it's not a real boy. So. Yeah, it's all prototype. Okay. But yeah. man, I got so good at cask on though, and then we got real tight <laughs> with a couple of the MAs because you're both up there for like yeah. twelve plus hours a day. Yeah, you're just hanging out. Yep. Um, MAs are a very interesting community. Also, I know you yeah. talked to those dudes a couple episodes ago. Mm. That yeah. Well, there's some, guy, uh, like one of them's still in and the other guy was out. But then I've, I talked yeah. to the the no fat chiefs episode. That dude's an MA. Okay, yeah. He's a wild boy. <laughs> I need to get yeah. him back on. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, like their community is really interesting. Like I got to be, I wasn't like super close with a bunch, but like, like at work, I was, I was pretty tight with him because I would stand base CDO and Groton and all the MAs okay. there would, you'd interact with them a ton. And yeah, I mean, yeah. it's, it's interesting. They're like, I thought most of them were cool, but, um, it's, it's a, it's a weird little ecosystem within the Navy. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I started standing cask on and I got really good at that. Cause you're standing it every three or four days for 12 right. hours. That's the only right. watch I can stand. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I got to the point where like when we do the big shipyard drills and stuff, they yeah. may be the cask on drill monitor. Yeah. You're like the guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I mean, like, even during the drill debriefs, the the captain would be like, "All right, well, uh, you know, pay off the Schaefer. What do you think about how they did? Are they following the procedure?" Yeah. And be like, "Well, actually, sir, in this part of the book, let's yeah. start nuking it out." <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, I I had fun staying the cask on. Honestly, yeah. they got pretty fucking boring at some points. But, right. Uh, our command was cool with us um, reading books up there. 
as long as oh, you nice. weren't like completely turned away from the window and yeah you know paying attention so huh. uh started reading a lot more books mm-hmm. uh did a lot of doodling like basically make like hand-drawn <laughs> memes and yeah. pass them out to the the boys as they were going across the brow but um yeah it's essentially all i did for got almost a year uh wow. i was only staying in cascon and then eventually they moved me over to be barge quarter deck watch uh once my med board had actually gotten approved and mm-hmm. i'd done all my va appointments and they were like yeah you're just waiting for the decision now yeah they just made me the barge quarter deck watch and completely took me off of the duty section watch bill so monday through friday i'd stand barge watch for six hours in the morning and then go home and bounce <laughs> yeah and then that eventually after a few months of that people literally forgot that i still worked there yeah so dude. so i'd show up in the mornings and the duty section yeah. leader would be like oh shit you're here uh yeah the watch bill's fat today we don't need you so i'd show up at like seven and be oh darn walking out to the parking lot at 7 15 yep. like, dude <laughs> i so we went green crew on my i was on a bn for my last boat and like it was probably like eight weeks before i was going to transfer maybe like no nah, it was like three months we had like when we went green it was like three months left so we go green and i'm transferring so the other chief who had only been there for like six months was the guy, right? Like he took over and owned the division and everything. So like, I, and I just kept showing up to work and every day that I would come in, he, he would, <laughs> my boy, my boy, Ryan, he would look at me and he'd be like, what the fuck are you doing here? Yeah. And I'm like, I'm, <laughs> I don't know. I still fucking work here. And like, same thing with like my cob was transferring too. So like he would come in sometimes and then you start to just not see him. And, um, me and him would just be sitting in the chiefs and shooting the shit. And then like, he would fucking disappear. And so after a while, and like, then like more than more people would be like, what the fuck are you doing here? Yeah. I'm like, dude, <laughs> I'm not on leave. Like, I don't know. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? I still and have so, orders. Like I, I yeah, gotta so do something. <laughs> finally, I was just like, all right, let me test this out. And so I just started like, I'd show up and I'd see my guys a little bit and then I would just leave. And then it got to a point where I'm like, yeah, people really don't expect me to be here and they don't give a fuck if I'm here. Yeah. And I wasn't standing duty, I don't think, either. Um, so yeah, I mean, I was just like, all right. So then I started <laughs> like just not showing up certain days. And then I mean it got to a point the last like eight weeks I was there, I was showing up like once a week, dude. And like that, that's it was that's where I got to also. It was yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> and then like it happened again at my shore duty because of covid and then because um like so i all my cancer stuff happened and then when i came back from that uh i was i ended up like i I went into therapy after like my when my radiation started all that shit happened i came back to work and talked to my doc about uh mental health got referred whatever started seeing a psychologist for like six months and i had something pretty horrific happen like lost a bunch of family members unexpectedly and traumatically. Right. So like, um, that just, I fucking was a dumpster fire. And so that's when I got on medication and they put me limb due for mental health. And that was the last six months in the Navy. So like during that time, I was just like not showing up to work because I didn't, I didn't have any reason to, cause being limb due, they wouldn't let me travel. So they wouldn't let me do my job. Like I couldn't go out on a boat yeah. and do an inspection. So like, if I can't do that, there's not really any reason for me to show up. So I just wasn't. And like my supply officer yeah. was cool as fuck <laughs> and didn't care. Um, and he knew like what was going on and shit too. So he was just kind of sympathetic and was just like, yeah, man, do what you got to do. I don't care. Like you're retiring, you're on your way out. And then like, uh, we had a new supply officer show up. That's like, he needs to show up to work every day at fucking this time and fucking <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, Hey, first of all, fuck you. Yeah. Second of all, <laughs> I'm like, I'm not doing that. And like, and I could have just shit on this dude's chest and walked away. But like, I, uh, like big timeline wise, I basically just blew him off until, uh, I could start terminal leave. Cause I was going to just sell all my leave back. Cause I didn't need to go to work anyway. Yeah. Um, and then this guy started being a douchebag and I just did like, I didn't have it in me to like enter into this conflict that I would. I mean, I would have just turned him into a fucking doormat, but like <laughs> one, I didn't want like anybody to see me doing that. Cause it wasn't like the right answer, but I was in a place where I didn't really care. Um, but then I was just like, I didn't have it in me to like just engage in the conflict at all. So I just called the admin senior chief and I was, I was about to go into, I got a surgery to clean up scar tissue in my sinuses from all the cancer shit. 
And so I would have three weeks of convalescent leave. And then literally like the, I would come back from convalescent leave and the next day my terminal would start. And so like, just to troll this fucking supply officer, I was like, Hey, guess what? I'm not coming to work ever the fuck again. Like, just cause fuck you, you know? And like, and I didn't even have to argue with him about it. So I was just like, eh, small price to pay. Fucking I'll yeah. just take all my terminal and you can go fuck yourself. But you know, I didn't want, like, I could have just fucking sock puppeted this dude, but like, I didn't want it. Cause like, the chief it's not of staff, worth it that close yeah, to the end. Yeah. And like, yeah. Uh, the chief of staff was really cool and he would have been on my team for sure. But like, but at the same time, I mean, it is like we're arguing about me doing something that's technically wrong. So I'm like, yeah. hey, fuck, whatever. I'll just go on terminal. <laughs> that's fine. Like, so that's what I ended up doing. But yeah, like that. Yeah, I, I had the same deal a couple times. And it was like I was making up for lost time, too. Like, I didn't even feel bad about it because of oh, like yeah. how hard I had gone my entire career. I'm just like, yeah, no, I don't even I don't feel a modicum of guilt over this shit at all. Like, I'm just yeah. like, yeah, this is making up for all the times the Navy fucked me. So I'm just yeah. like, yeah, I don't care. Yeah, I got uh, I got one comment from a, a dude once I was only staying in barge watch and yeah. those days where they started saying, like, we don't need you go home. Mm -hmm. And I, I overheard a guy because he, he didn't know that I was like walking past him yeah. in the cruise mess area of the barge, but overheard him saying like, oh, fucking Schaefer must be nice. Just skirting yeah. out of work every day. And so I just went over and was like, hey, man, like, it is really nice having, you know, maybe a heart attack. Maybe I'm fucking yeah. dying. Severe yeah. panic attacks with my wife and kids in the car. Like, what if I lose control of the vehicle? No, this is super dope. I'm loving it. Like, <laughs> Yeah, this is <laughs> it was my always my dream to fuck yeah. never know if I was having a, if my heart's exploding in my chest or not. Yeah. Fucking asshole. But yeah, um, you know, I, I took advantage of the the barge watch gig um, a little too yeah. heavily. Like you were saying, same thing at the end. I would show up like maybe once a week. Yeah. Yeah. And then I mean, in my free time, know. I got really big into day trading. So it. Oh, hey. Turns out right. I'm uh, autistic enough to. <laughs> The okay I believe at it, day trading. Yeah, so. I believe it. Dude, I, I went down a rabbit hole for a minute about like that Tim Sykes guy and like penny stocks and all that kind of shit. Yep. And like I thought about it, but then I'm like, dude, I don't think this would be as fun as like I am making it out to be. I don't know. Like, so I just I kind of stopped. I don't recommend it, honestly. Yeah, like, really? <laughs> I, all right, good. I, I got into it just because I had enough time and mm. I was like, you know, I'll, I'll throw a couple hundred bucks into the market yeah. and see what I can do with it. The first trade I made, I I lost like, I think it was like two or three hundred dollars. Yeah. It was pretty much almost everything I'd put in. <laughs> and so instead of being responsible and saying like, this isn't for me, I just, again, Re being a new guy, I was just like, <laughs> nope, I'm going to beat the system. <laughs> yeah, I got to beat this game. <laughs> So I gotta figure this out. I was still doing like something productive. I probably could have done a lot more responsibly productive hey. things, but yeah, 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 whatever. <laughs> um, yeah. So I I did the bar to watch thing for a while, and then I think it was February of this year. Uh, our EDMC came up to me one day and basically said, "Has anybody talked to you about you getting out of the Navy soon?" Mm -hmm. It's like, what do you mean soon? Because yeah. the the last thing I'd heard from the med board was that I'd be out in about this time, like mid June, early July. Right. And he was like, Oh, well, we've been sending messages off so that when the crew gets released after the decom's done in springtime, you're just gonna be out of the Navy when the crew gets released. It's like well, nobody Thanks fucking for told fucking me. Telling you, yeah. asshole. <laughs> Jesus I mean, Christ. I'm all for being done with the Navy sooner, but my right. wife and I have kind of made financial plans and yeah, life you plans have to based off of prepare like, for that, dude. Yeah. Like I'm not exactly ready for that but i guess Fucking i can make real. it work like Unreal. again the, the day trading thing the first thing i thought was like well i'll just pull all my money out of the stock market back yeah. into my bank account for a cushion like if i need yeah. to not that i have a lot by any means i'm not trying to like brag about some dumb shit yeah, like that yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> um so i was like all right, i guess i'll make it work so he told me that on like a god i don't know it was a wednesday or a thursday something like that mm -hmm. but that Friday afternoon, that same week, my chief texts me at three or four in the afternoon. He's like, hey, did you see your orders dropped? What orders? Like, what, Sep why is nobody orders. telling me anything? Like, what is happening? And he's like, oh, I mean, no, to be orders. fair, if you logged into a computer once in a while and fucking reviewed message well, traffic. But I'd have to be at work for that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but, yeah. But no, uh, apparently they 
they dropped orders like yeah as far as i could tell out of nowhere that say mm. you're gonna report to squadron next thursday and you're gonna hang oh. out at squadron until you're done okay and i was just like okay well that kind of sucks because squadron's 20 minutes further away from my house i already have a yeah. 40 minute commute but like that is that's pretty all me stupid. for living out in the middle of the country yeah so, whatever uh so yeah i worked at squadron the last couple months i was in which was mm. the dopest hookup because the yeah. uh the QA office wanted me to come help them out with paperwork and stuff just yeah. to be a, a dude hanging out. Yeah. And the squadron QAO is a civilian that's a prior LDO. And then the deputy QAO is a currently active duty LDO. It's like they're nice. both, you know, chill as uh, fuck. Yeah. Super <laughs> chill. But yeah, they, they both basically said like, if you have something you need to do for your med board stuff, yeah, or if you just yeah. wanted a day to stay home and make sure you're ready to yeah, get, get out, out of the, of the Navy, Navy. Like, yeah. just don't show up. Just text us yeah. the night before and say, I would like yeah, to I not come in tomorrow. To yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's funny. So Good the days them. I did go to work, I would show up at like 8.30 and be gone by 9.30. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, so that was super dope. Um, That's awesome. It was a lot better than I thought it would be. Mm -hmm. uh, and and they, they made that the last month or so a lot easier than it, yeah. it probably would have been if I had still been at sure. the decom sure. project. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm just looking at my little notes over here real quick to make sure I didn't skip anything again. Uh, well, like, I'm curious about, like, the the med board process itself. You talked earlier, I mean, before we were recording about, like, just, like, the how it's like the unknown and it doesn't seem like anybody fucking knows anything yeah. about what you're supposed to do with your hands. So like talk yeah. to me about that a little bit. Yeah. That's what I was going to wrap up with. They, okay. They make it such a, I don't even know how to word it. Not a secret process, but they, they basically make it to where if, if you don't know the acronyms and the process yeah. or work with somebody that really knows it, mm. it's, it's a lot of just, Hey, surprise cockbag. Got gotcha. you. Like, <laughs> just stuff out of nowhere like it's uh i had multiple times where i would go to like the va appointments mm -hmm. which were also god just awful when you, they, when you say va appointments do you mean like the where you go to a contractor and they're like analyzing your shit that you're claiming or is it yeah, something different so all the okay. all the claims i want to make for the med board yeah the okay. va gets you appointments for um mm -hmm. so the the mental health stuff i had to redo because it has to be under a VA doctor. Okay. The mental health doctors I had been seeing about four or five months before my VA appointment started mm. basically told me like, okay, well, if you're getting med boarded, you're going to be under the VA's care. You got to make mental health appointments through them for your med board. And I was like, okay, cool. That makes sense. Like I, I'm sort getting of. med boarded. I mean, yeah. it makes sense I mean, enough. Like I'll just get a new doctor. Well, I'm not I'm worried about it. I'm saying like that you should be seen with an active duty provider until you're not active duty anymore. Like, so that's what but, I'm getting at. She, okay. she, she told me that would be under the care of the VA. Turns Thank God out. the cook chief's here to fucking know shit. God <laughs> yeah. damn. Like I dude, that was one of my favorite lines when I was active duty. I'm like, Oh, thank God the cook chief's here to fucking yeah. be the single point <laughs> yeah. of failure. Like what the fuck? Like, why am I the one that knows this shit? One of my cob, my cob on Jimmy Carter used to say, let's say all the time he's an A ganger. And he'd be like, why do I know this? And you don't know this. Like, cause he's yeah. like, why? Cause he shouldn't be the fucking one that knows the thing. Like the expert should like, yeah. why do I know this? And you don't know this. What the fuck? Like, yeah. yeah. Like, why, so, what the, come on, man. So I, I felt stable enough on the mental health stuff where I was like, yeah. yeah, I'll just, I'll wait for a VA doctor to get assigned to me. Right. And then I get an email from the VA a couple months later saying, you've got this yeah, appointment yeah. with a psychiatrist for your disability thing. Yeah. For okay, a, cool. Like to be analyzed, not yeah. like, well, I thought it was claim, not like I therapy. I thought it was, yeah, this, this is your new doctor. <laughs> like, yeah, no, again, no, 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 nobody no, no. tells you shit. They, yep. so, yep. So I go to this mental health appointment. It's it's like a Zoom call sort of thing. Yeah. I think it was on like Teams or something. Yeah, uh, something same, gross. Same. I did mine on like fucking Zoom or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But she basically from the get go said, "I'm just here for your disability claim. Like this yep. isn't to provide treatment. This is not this therapy. Isn't a diagnosis. This is not treatment. This is yep. just yep." So we went through that, and when she started off with that, I was just 
It's like very confused. Excuse me. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? fuck like, but, what? But so we did that appointment and I mean, it's a pretty standard mental health appointment as far as like the stuff she asked. But the thing that really pissed me off afterwards, which I actually, I wrote a letter to the med board office, like the med board people after I got her write-ups back, because at the end of the med board, before you're officially approved to get mm. med boarded or not, like when your results yeah. are about to get sent off, you get to see all the doctor's write-ups. Mm -hmm. So she put in her write-ups that I have a alcohol dependency and that's where all of my problems are coming from. Like a bunch of shit like that. And I've been referred to SARP and things like that. What? We never talked about alcohol during my appointment. Yeah. I have never been referred to SARP. I've yeah. never been like side commented at that. Hey, maybe you should go. Like, so I talked to the oh, legal wow. office at the local med board office and I had them scrub through all my records to see if maybe somebody put a comment somewhere. We're like, yeah, this guy said he has three beers a week. That's a problem. Like yeah, something dumb yeah. like that. They couldn't find anything and I've never been told anything. So I wrote a letter to the med board office or whatever, when my results got sent up, basically saying, I agree with all these results. However, comma, this mental Ooh. health appointment was hot trash. Like, yeah. I don't know where all this is coming from. That's yeah. that's not true. Um, the other shitty one was the sleep study that I had to do. Mm. I get like one good night of sleep every week or two where yeah. I, I don't wake up a couple times in the middle of the night or I actually mm -hmm. feel kind of rested in the morning. Mm -hmm. So the sleep study that I went to, one, they scheduled it the night before Thanksgiving, which was dumb, but yeah. sure. And then... It was like the one good night of sleep that I got in those couple weeks. So I wake yeah. up in the morning and they're like, yeah, you just kind of have mild snoring. That That's it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, can I like, can I reschedule this? Like, what, can I do right, anything tomorrow? Like they're, they're only really looking for sleep apnea. And it's like, so if you don't have sleep apnea, that's not the problem. That doesn't mean yeah. that you don't have disordered sleep. You know what I mean? But like, yeah. well, I mean, I even showed them my, my wife's got yeah. videos of me. I mean, it sounds like you're sucking a straw on an empty drink. Like I make yeah, these weird yeah, yeah. slurping noises. I wake myself up two or three times a night. I toss yeah. and turn a lot. Apparently you my probably, sleep study, I just slept. Yeah. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah. So that, I mean, that one kind of sucked. Yeah. You could always revisit it and then like blame it on the Navy anyway. Like just feel like yeah. it was a fluke or something, but yeah, be I'm, I'm going to have to, yeah, it's going to be harder now, but I'm going to have to revisit that one. <laughs> and then, um, so during the back to the mental health one, when she was going through my record, she said that there was a, a gap in my mental health appointments, basically my like service I was getting from where the civilian provider had told me you're going to be under the VA now. So I, yeah. I wasn't making appointments because I was waiting for the VA to pick it back up. Right. So she said she took that as I'm completely fine mental health wise, even though in the beginning of the appointment, Fucking she flagged idiot. me for PTSD. Yeah, and I explained. Same. same. They were yeah, like, "You have fucking every marker for PTSD." I'm like, well, yeah. "I was never diagnosed with it." So, <laughs> Diana, yeah, same for me. But yeah. I even told her the same thing about I. I thought the VA was going to take over my care, and she was like, "No, that's not how it works. You should have been seeking health for the past five or six months, and getting help." Let me jump you know, in my fucking time <laughs> machine. Like what? Like what do we fucking? And that's, I, that's I, like the, the type of stuff that throughout the whole med board process was just the nightmare of it all. So you get to a yeah. certain point where somebody says, hey, five or six months ago, you should have gotten this sort of appointment or yeah. you should have gotten this thing in your medical record, this form, this X, Y, Z. How like, the fuck was I supposed to know? Like, yeah, like <laughs> nobody tells you anything. You just you get told Unreal. even from the get go when the um, the neurologist referred me up to the med board process as a whole. I yeah. asked him, okay, well, how, how long do you think it's going to take before I'm discharged just so my wife and I can start planning and yeah. you know, we've got two kids to take care of, like, you know, financial wise, I want to start to know if I have to save up paychecks or right. do whatever. Oh, I've seen anywhere from six months for like super fucked up, like combat injuries type mm -hmm. of things to two plus years for mental health related things like that's a pretty big window, dude. Like, yeah, <laughs> that's a huge window. So every step of the way, you're just getting told, oh, I don't know, I've seen this wide yeah. time frame, or I don't really know what you're supposed to do now. Just wait for a phone call. Like the, I would say the biggest things I wish I'd known going into it were that 
you can kind of pressure the system to work faster mm-hmm. yeah. if you so you get assigned a, a peblo a physical evaluation board liaison officer they, they just call them peblos but okay. if you email your peblo or call them or go see them in person and basically just say i've been sitting here for a month with no updates what's happening yeah. they'll start poking who they need to and mm-hmm. i mean even if they don't know what to do they'll start asking questions because i i did that once or twice and it was like when i submitted the ice report like oh suddenly yeah. here's your answer yeah. there you go yeah okay well what was yeah, the you're hold just up? Like, what? sitting in a pile of fuck like just waiting for yeah. somebody to give a shit and then you go in and provide a, a like a demand signal for them to pay attention to it so they do like it's it's yeah but it's just it's frustrating that it works uh, that way like yeah which i don't know um but so pressuring the system and then uh keep not like your medical record but keep a record of everything that ha- yeah that is going on leading up to the med board and then mm. the process during because yeah. I had a, a few times where I get asked questions about, okay, when did you have this appointment or how long mm-hmm. has it been since this thing happened? I'm like, dude, right. I, I don't know. I've, I've been a bump yeah. on a log for two years now, just yeah. kind of watching time go by. And right. that, that seems to sort of slow things down because then people can't put whatever on, you know, this form here to send yeah. it off. So the, the two biggest things, pressuring the system and keeping your own timeline and, yeah. and just making sure people are sticking to the timeline that you expect, unless you want to just hang out for like two plus years like I did. But <laughs> I mean, I yeah, I can't imagine anybody would want to do that, but maybe, I guess. I don't know I, if you're getting a free paycheck to do yeah, nothing. Yeah, get a paycheck to do nothing. Then <laughs> yeah, banana. So what are you what are you going to be when you grow up, man? Um, what are you doing now that you're out of the out of the gulag? Uh. I'm, I'm still waiting on an offer, but I'm going to go work at a uh, power plant. Um, we're I've actually been all the boxes and stuff behind me. We've been packing up the house oh, and gotcha. getting ready to move, but basically going to go be a technician at a power plant. Um, yeah. Nothing in my med board discharge says that I can't do nuclear stuff or like stand watches oh, on a right. reactor like, or anything, but, but I don't want to like- go back to that sleep schedule and, have yeah. it flare up again, you know? But also, like, they fucking... Who are they to say you can't work at a civilian power plant? You know what I mean? Like, it's not... Yeah, that too. Yeah. Like, okay, I still have all the qualifications and the experience yeah. and the training, so it's like, fuck, okay, if you don't want me to work on a submarine, that doesn't disqualify me from working at a civilian yeah. power plant. Yeah, my, um, my biggest thing is just I, I don't want to go back to the rotating yeah. shift work life and risk something compounding yeah. again and for so, sure man and i mean like i guess you have the flexibility of like you could just go be an electrician too like a conventional electrician it's not like you don't yeah. have that ability i i don't know like how it all works you probably have to get like licensed or some shit but like yeah i mean you have that ability too so that's that's pretty good yeah they, they get um, paid super well the i think the the biggest concern with working at a power plant is just if they suck me back into all the nuclear stuff and again, I'm just worried about what I mean, what the fuck is going on in my brain. <laughs> yeah, dude. But like as a civilian, like you just have to remember that you have a lot more like agency. You have a lot more ability to say yes or no. And like, this is what I'm willing to accept. Like, And a lot more free time also. Like, yeah. You're not stuck there doing it for right. months at a time underwater. Like, And like, they can't like really force you into doing overtime and weird schedules mm-hmm. and shit. Like you can just tell them like look i had a bunch of issues with this shit when i was in the military so like i'm a nine to five dude i'm like a regular fucking schedule not really interested in overtime right now maybe later kind of thing and just like take it or fucking leave it you know what i mean and like yeah i feel like most power plants get such a hard on for you guys when you get out because of <laughs> yeah. the training and everything. it's like they're not gonna give a fuck they're gonna be like all right fine like no worries we'll just make it work you yeah. know, and it's like they'll just have kind of have that note or whatever of like this dude's got to stay on days or whatever. I don't fucking know because I'm sure there's people that like being on nights too. Like there's weird people like oh, that in the civilian. Yeah, there's world, people but... like that in the navy that I mean, good on them because yeah. they'll they'll yeah. take up the the night watch bill and yep. I don't got to worry about it. <laughs> fucking nocturnal people and shit, but 
I always hated the mid watch because you get off and you fucking you're like you want to go right to bed and then all the drills yeah. start and all the bullshit and you're just like that was I was pretty much always mid watch on my first boat. It's it awful. I hate, it was nice when I was standing dive because I fucking hated standing dive and like you don't do anything on the mid watch so it was like I felt like safer like the less bad yeah. shit was gonna happen <laughs> but like. <laughs> Uh, fuck and then, like even when i went to pd it was like the co was sleeping so it was like you know even if i fucked up pd the xo was pretty chill so i was just like <laughs> fucking whatever um they weren't assholes about it and like sometimes like we had the, that fucking same co that dude that was i wanted to punch in the face like he fuck he would come into control like during the day and it just do dumb shit like oh we're gonna go to pd but this time you're gonna go s- slow or this time you're going to not preload water or this time like uh, he was good like idea, pre- fairy. yeah well he was pretending we were like on a fast boat and it's like bro like and my cob would just constantly be like sir you can't drive this thing like it's a fast boat because it's not designed to be at pd for sustained periods of time like it's got a superstructure like it's just not the fuck what this thing does yeah. and he would always be trying to drive it like he fucking stole it like he'd be driving it like it was a fast boat and it's like dude and he, but then he'd shit on you for not being able to maintain pd and i'm like if the fucking superstructure comes out of the water all the water comes out of it and then guess what's in it fucking air like i can't <laughs> what do you want me to do about that like i can't like it becomes like you become super buoyant out of nowhere and it's like i can't fucking just make that go away magically and it's a motherfucker once it happens to like get it back under control. Like, oh god, I fucking I hated stand and dive, dude. Fuck that shit. That was where all, most of my anxiety came from. I think. I mean, I'm sure it was a bunch of other shit too, but like most of it, like I anxiety stopping me from sleeping started with me standing dive because I'd be like yeah. freaking the fuck out because I never felt like an expert. Even yeah, I never I never got removed from watch standing and I was told I was good at it, but like I never felt good at it. And I, I te- until the bitter end, dude, like the last underway, I remember like the last PD trip I did was like we were uh, on our way back in from an underway before, and then we were going to like do a bunch of shit and dead stick to PSNS for a shipyard period. And uh, that last couple of PD trips we did, I was like fucking cocky almost. But I was just like, part of it, I think, was because I knew I didn't have to do it anymore. So I was just yeah. like, I was like, you know what? I'm not even going to fucking preload any water. Because like we had to save air for some reason. We were doing something where we needed a bunch of air and the high packs are always broken. So like, uh, I was like, well, we don't need fucking depth control. Fuck it. I'm like, I ain't fucking doing shit. I'm like, I'll just preload some water and fucking drive this bitch to PD. And we did like twice. And it was fucking dead nuts and i was killing it but it was like the last time i ever stood yeah. alive so it was like i never felt good at it and i'd be like looking at the night orders the night before like seeing what we had to do the next day and then like ops and cps before i go to the rack like fucking just reviewing shit because i just never i felt like something was gonna go horribly wrong I, I wasn't gonna react fast enough or i was gonna do the wrong thing and fucking break shit and kill people you know what i mean like i'm just like it was just one of those things where there's never a safety net. Like, it, like it's, as chief it's of watch, like a, it's kind of like an imposter syndrome almost. Yeah, like, yeah. You, well, a big part of it is was like every other rate that stands dive pretty much. I mean, sonar techs don't really do it. I mean, sometimes they do, but like everybody drives the boat first, almost mm-hmm. always. Like, except for cooks. Like sonar techs might not. Like it depends, and then. uh but they still know a lot more than I do about all the shit that goes on up there. So like, and then on Jimmy Carter, it was my second boat when I, I made chief, I qualified chief of the watch and I got to stand it a little bit. But then once I made chief, cause I was a first class for like the first year I was there. And then the last three, I was the chief and they kept me and the other guy left, but um, they wouldn't let me go in control anymore. They were just like, no, you have to be in the gap. And, and they weren't wrong. Like I didn't have any fleet returnees, like they needed me down there because it was I was slightly undermanned, but they were all babies. So like they needed a grown up. Yeah. So like, OK, fair enough. <laughs> they needed a but, wrangler. Yeah, 100 <laughs> percent. And like and. um, But I needed to qualify dive then to, for like just for professional development. And I was trying to mm-hmm. and they wouldn't let me do that. They wouldn't let me stay and watch. They let me stand a bunch of duty chief, though, because fuck me, like especially on the weekends. <laughs> um, But. Then so then I like by the time I stood dive, I mean, I was a senior chief on my third submarine. And so like I didn't have any fucking real experience. Like I stood 
chief of the watch for the first fucking six months. And then once I was qualified dive, I basically never got out of the dive chair. But uh, yeah, man, I it was like I never felt like an expert because I wasn't you know what i mean like i never yeah. drove the boat and now i'm in charge of supervising and giving orders to the guys driving the boat it's like i don't even fucking know how to do what they're doing and you got me in charge of these motherfuckers <laughs> giving them orders and shit and then i got an officer to the deck asking me for recommendations are you fucking <laughs> i don't fucking know you better know bitch like you're the officer of the deck it was it was i always felt like i was in a bad dream dude i was just like how the fuck did i get here why is this allowed to happen yeah like this does not feel i like and i would tell people too i told my co that shit i told all the department i told my cob constantly i'm like i should not be up here like okay like like coming up and relieving or like stand and watch with a babysitter okay but because the first patrol they put me in a stacked watch section where like the chief of the watch was also qualified dive. It was like the A gang chief and he was fucking great at it. So like I kind of had a safety net the first patrol, but like I also had no fucking idea what I was doing yeah. really. <laughs> and then that, so thank God he was there. He kept me out of trouble, but the patrol after that, yeah, fuck training rules are off, bitch. I got like a dipshit for a chief of the watch. And like <laughs> I, one kid, I mean, he was really great at driving the boat, but he like, as a sailor, he was kind of a shit bag. He was a good dude. He just like, he needed to be handled with care. Basically. Like you needed to just mm-hmm. treat the dude. Like he wasn't the piece of shit that he kind of was. And he would respond well, like, and he wasn't a bad guy. He just like, I think he, there was a certain amount of it that was just like how he grew up. And then there was a certain amount of it that I think he just had a bad taste in his mouth from the Navy. Cause of course, you know, yeah. E fours and E threes and shit. Um, but then, uh, and then the other kid was like brand new to sticks. And so I'm just like, Oh God, I'm, yeah. we're all going to, we're all going to fucking die or I'm at least. Oh God. <laughs> yeah. I'm the fucking grown up in the room. I had offs of the decks going senior. What should we do? I'm like, I don't fucking know. Like I, I'm just fucking pretending dude. Like, I don't, and I mean, I, I like sort of knew what I was doing, but like, you know what I mean? Like shit would go wrong. Like one time on the midwatch, the fucking entire SCP, all the digital indications just went away. And I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck just happened? Cause we had ESGN still. And it was like, one was already broke dick. So if the other one goes down, you don't have digital. I didn't fucking know that. I probably should have, <laughs> but I didn't. And so when it happened, I was just like, Oh fuck. And then I'm like, <laughs> and then there was like, I mean, I glitched for like 10 seconds. I was like, I, this is all my nightmares coming true. Yeah. And then I realized all the manual indications still worked. And I'm like, okay, oh, uh, we're good. All the man, just look at the manual indications. We're okay. Just keep your eye on all the needles. We're fucking, we're fine. Like, I mean, you guys really then, freaked out for no reason just oh then. Oh <laughs> my God, dude. My soul left my fucking body. I'm like, here we go. I, here we go. I fuck. I knew it was going to happen. And then, uh, it, yeah, it turned out. And then it, you know, the Navy T's fucking figured out their life and fixed it. And, uh, we got them back, but, and it was, thank God it was on the mid watch too, because like if the CO had been awake, it would have been 10 times worse. Cause he would have freaked the fuck out. He would have been screaming at me because somehow it would have been my fault. <laughs> like he would have, It would have been a shit show, but thank God that fucking asshole is in the rack. But, um, I mean, the, yeah, the same man. feeling happens even when you're like, for me, say an electrical operator, Mm. being an electrician that's like yeah. what you're trained to do for when you yeah, get to the yeah. fleet i still had the same feeling until like you're saying at the very end where i was just like i'm senior enough i got it like yeah i, I mean we had a um was it the scrubber i think a scrubber or a burner one of them uh hard grounded itself out like mm. ended up being one of the heaters in the inside just melted itself to the yeah. chassis but i was doing my hourly ground readings for my logs I took ground on the bus and it was just hard zero, which is mm-hmm. no bueno. Like, yeah, probably yeah. a fire going on. Oh, but God. I, I, I took that reading and I, I said out loud, well, that doesn't really look right. And I turned the ground <laughs> detector off and the engine off to the watch behind me was like, uh, electrical operator, excuse me. Like, what What was that? The <laughs> fuck? Yeah. <laughs> and I told him, I was like, sir, just, just give me a second. I'm trying to process it. Hold on. All right, let me try this again. I turned back and I took the ground again. It was still zero. And I was just like, God, fuck me. All right. Anyways. Yeah. And I just said out loud, like shifting yeah. the electro plant to this lineup. And the Angelus watch is like, what, what, what do I do? What do I need to do? I was like, sir, yeah, yeah. make this announcement. One MC this, two yeah, MC yeah. this. I'm shifting yeah. this. All right. Now you're going to say this. Like I was yeah. just like sock puppeting him. Right. 
And then at the end of it, he was like, wow, you're really good at that. He's like, so I'm going to be honest with you. I don't really know where all that brute force memorization of procedures yeah, came from. Yeah. Like, it wow, just kind of came spilling out. Like <laughs> Years of it, the Navy fucking forcing it down your throat and punching you in the yeah. face and fucking <laughs> eng depth training and CTE exams and shit. But like, yeah. dude, the, the, for me, it was like, the, like if that shit like that happening, it was like as chief of the watch, bro, I was fucking on it. I was really good at that, but it's very procedural. And it's like, mm -hmm. if, if X, then Y, you know, like if then yeah. kind of shit <laughs> and like open the book and check circle X, the procedure like that shit. I'm good. And for some reason, I don't know, like the trim system and all that shit. Like it was just like, it made sense to me. Like, and it took a while, but like, once I got good at it, I was fucking, I was a really good chief of the watch. And I was great on the one MC. Like when the fucking alarms and shit would go off, like I just had a system and I was on it and it, I was, I was really good at it, but dive. You've, also very got the, uh, you've got the radio voice for making one MCs too. I do. Yeah. I do. I have a sex phone <laughs> operator voice. No big deal. Um, but like the, the chief or chief of the watch is very procedural, very black and white dive is fucking voodoo, man. Like it's, there's some procedural <laughs> shit, but for the most part, it's real subjective. It's like, yeah, there's yeah. load supportability tables, but it they like it works in the trainer because the trainer runs on a fucking algorithm. You go out in the Pacific in December, like fuck you. That's the yeah. algorithm. Get fucked, nerd. Like the ocean gets a vote and it doesn't follow the rules. Like yep. yeah, salinity and fucking load supportability and speed and blah blah blah. And <laughs> but like the ocean's just like, ha, fuck you. Your math doesn't work here, bitch. <laughs> and so it's just like it's, you have no it's, power here. Yeah, you have no power <laughs> here. Like it's just like fuck you, dude. Because I could, I could trim the fucking ship in the trainer like Nat's ass. Like I could dial that because I yep. knew. Like I had all the math memorized, and and it is procedural in the trainer because it runs on an algorithm. But like. That yeah, it don't work in the fucking ocean when the ocean's like yeah, the Pacific in the, in the in winter like, just fuck you, dude. That's yeah. that's your trim fucking math and like the like it's just go fuck yourself. That's what it is. Like it's just like you just can't fucking do it, man. At least I could, and I'm sure there's people out there that like got it all figured out and oh, yeah, doing, shit doing the Rain at Man it. thing at the panel. Yeah, and, yeah. But they're but the it but the guys that you see that are really good at it, they are. They're just like do this you know what i mean and yeah. they're like looking at the indicate looking at what the needles are doing and shit and they're just like all right do this do that mm, boom mm -hmm. we're ready you know and yeah. i'm just like I, that's not me dude i just like i'm not fucking in tune with the fucking you know like this, the <laughs> ocean waves or whatever the fuck i had this this yn2 that was like the best planes i'd ever seen in my fucking life and he would we'd be at pd and they'd have like the pair of his picture up and he could he would adjust based on what he saw the waves doing. And I'm like, bullshit. Like, I'm like, oh you're my God. fucking no, shut the fuck up. Off. But he would he <laughs> dude, that kid had stood so much sex. Like he would he's like, no, really, like, show, let me show you. And he would he would explain it to me. And I it would. It probably was bullshit. Like, he was probably just fucking with me. But like, yeah. <laughs> he was the way he presented it, I was like, is there really something to this? And I'm like trying to figure it out, like watching this. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like, I'm too stupid for this. Like I just, he was, it was like voodoo dude. And I'm just like, that's why I, I never felt comfortable. Cause there was just always this like mountain of uncertainty that like would just, was just looming, waiting to just kick me right in the butt. And I'm just like, I'm not, I'm not ready. I, I'm not cool yeah. enough for this job, dude. One of my one of my favorite lines from like any of the manuals we had in the engine room was for the manual that tells you how to operate the electric plant. Yeah. And it's like front page pretty much, like first yeah. page you turn to. There's a line that says something I I've already like brain dumped the yeah. the exact yeah. quote, but <laughs> it was something that's basically like this this manual is a guide and these are the electric plant lineups that you should go to. But in the cases of like casualties and abnormal operations, like figure it the fuck out, keep the lights on. Like, it's like it basically says like, here's your normal operations, and then yeah. from there, just be a good operator. Figure it out, <laughs> nerd. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's pretty much dive, dude. If you read the volume yeah. seven, it's just like a bunch of like submerged hydrodynamic principles, and there are procedures, but it's like the procedures leave a lot up for interpretation. Like when it tells you yep. to do shit, like go Which to I'm a, I'm a big fan of, honestly, 
Because uh, I, 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 that, that leaves room for you to put your own little, your own like, little salt bay if, on it. <laughs> I guess if I was better at it, I would be a fan of it, but I'm I'm not. So like, it's like cooking, right? Like <laughs> we had all the AFRS cards and I never followed fucking any of them because I'm a better cook than the AFRS is, right? But if mm-hmm. you don't know how to do that, you're going to fuck everything up. Like you have to start somewhere, right? And so like, for me, dive was like that, where it was like, I wasn't cool enough to not follow the recipe. You know what I mean? Like I couldn't. And, and, but then the recipe was just like, figure it out, nerd. And I'm like, I can't, I don't know how, like, I'm just like, I'm not cool enough for this. And so, yeah, it was like, I'm sure like the people that could do that, that like understood it all and had the experience and whatever it worked, but not, not me. But <laughs> All right, man, let's wrap well, this shit up. Do you got any yeah, anything I we haven't the, uh, hit on yet? Yeah, I think the last... I'm sorry, you're probably going to have to edit that little bit out. My, all, my wife just good, poked man. her head in the front door and the ADT thing went off. <laughs> um, the the last thing I want, want to talk about is just like the, the mental health or like any problems in general. Mm-hmm. Um, I I've, I've equated it eventually over time to how you're allowed to say fire in the engine room. I, you are that's one you're not you, you are that's okay 100 percent allowed it's it's one of the things i got a real big kick out of on my first boat when i was giving checkouts to uh i don't know if you're supposed to say nubs anymore but junior whatever sailors. you're out of the navy dude nobody can yeah. fucking hurt you now. <laughs> <laughs> um but given checkouts to the nubs that were coming up trying to learn about you know what do you do if this pump is on fire, like whatever's mm-hmm. on their car that says talk about an electrical fire in the engine room or like yeah. uh, forward rates, getting their fish and stuff. You have to talk about fires and all that. Yeah. But uh, I would always just tell them like, all right, you want to get this check out? All right. The uh, number two R yeah, unit yeah. pump is on fire. Make the four MC, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. 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 Just, and then you just stare at them. You're like, but what are you doing? Where are you going? Where yeah. is that pump? Where's yeah. the power supply? Like you right. walk them through it and like yeah. make them go mm-hmm. touch it and get a feel for it. But my favorite part was always when you get to the point where you say, okay, make the form C. Yeah. What do you say? And they would always be like, oh, there's a, you know, <laughs> in the engine room. Like, did you can say it. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah they, kids would always say, oh, you have to say fuego. I'm like, shut the yeah. fuck up. No, you don't. You, you say fire in the engine room. You can say fire in the engine room all day. Yeah. And yeah. even a couple times I would take these kids right outside maneuvering like the doors are shut mm-hmm. but we'd stand right outside the door maneuvering and now we go all right watch this fire in the engine room oh fire in the engine oh. room yeah fire in the engine i would just say it a couple times yeah. and yeah they'd be like, oh, oh if you say it three times it so there's actually gonna be a fire <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah it's like beetlejuice yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, so I would, I would just tell them like you can sit here all day and Uh-oh. we can have a level volume normal tone conversation Oh, did I just lose the internet? I think we broke it. Oh, no. Are oh, you back right. now? All right, yeah. Okay. Uh, that's my internet. I'm on fucking Starlink out here in the country. Oh, that's all good. It worked great up until the very, very end, so <laughs> yeah. it's fine. So uh, I'll just I'll try to backtrack a little bit, and you can do your editing magic or not. It's all good. Up to you, I guess. Yeah, you're but, fine. Uh, but no, so I would just tell them we can sit here all day, and like we can have a level, volume, normal tone, and just say here, we can go back and forth. We can just say fire in the yeah. engine room to each other for 20 minutes. Yeah. Eventually, somebody's going to be like, what's wrong with you? Why are you saying that? Right. You can say it once or twice in passive conversation and nobody cares because yeah. you're not screaming about it. You're not yeah. running for CO2. You're not pulling, right. you know, whatever alarm, picking up whatever phone. Mm. Like, you're not doing something that raises a flag. Right. So the mental health thing. I feel like it's very similar to that where I can sit here and talk to my friends, whatever, and be like, yeah, man, I'm just like really stressed out or like yeah. this thing's kind of getting to me. I, you know, I, I didn't sleep well last night cause I was thinking about X, Y, and Z. Mm-hmm. And you know, you can have those conversations with your buddies and you know, good friends will try to tell you like, okay, well, have you done this about it or whatever? But if you're yeah. just passively talking about it, nobody's going to say, I mean, unless you say something very concerning right, in that right. normal voice, but Nobody's going to say, like, you, you should go talk to Doc or mm-hmm. have you tried to get a mental health appointment? There's going to be like, yeah, man, you're stressed. Like, it's not until yeah. you're 
you're not screaming it literally, but basically saying like, I'm having a fucking meltdown right now. Yeah, or like yeah. if this thing happens one more time, I'm going to fucking scream. Like I'm going right. to lose my shit on somebody. It's not until you start saying stuff like that, that people are like, Oh God. And that's the same thing as a fire in the engine room. It's mm-hmm. yeah, it's too late. It's happening. Yeah, you, yeah. You're running damage control at that point. Yeah. So I think, I think, my biggest problem with when all my issues first started is that I was treating it like that. Like what I said earlier about, I was taking it as a hit on my man card at first. Yeah, yeah. Because I'd even, I called my parents one night when it all first started and my dad was like, well, do you think you're actually having panic attacks? Not saying it in like a, yeah. you know, dad, like, oh, you're, you're tougher than that. But he was just right. asking. Yeah. And I told him like, no, I don't, I don't think I'm having panic attacks. I don't feel super stressed. I'm on a quote unquote shore duty, but I'm not out to sea underwater. Like I don't feel like there's anything wrong in life right now, but I, I guess something's happening, right. You know, but I don't, I don't, I'll be fine. And I just, I kept telling myself like, no, nah, it's, it's a one-off thing. It's, it's nothing. I'm, yeah. I'm better than this. I'm tougher than whatever you want to say. If, if I had just been a little bit, li- little bit less, not full of myself, but kind of mm-hmm. trying to man up about it and just yeah. said like, okay, something is happening. I need right. help. Even if it's just to go, talk to doc and him be like yeah you're a little stressed out you know maybe maybe drop some leave like yeah yeah take take some time off like something like that i i probably could have avoided my more major episodes maybe i don't maybe. know maybe my yeah. body actually was just fully done well and but- there's there's a, a middle ground where like like i feel like if if i had gotten like if i had gotten therapy before uh cancer and everything i i may have been able to avoid like being as disordered as i was when i got to that point but like i didn't it like it didn't register as a problem it like it i mean yeah. it was a problem in that like it was affecting my sleep and shit but like i didn't register it as like a problem i needed to go to medical for and and yeah. i think part part of it for sure was like the the same experience you had of like, I still thought I was 10 feet tall and bulletproof. Like I'm not having anxiety issues. I don't fucking have anxiety issues, but like I didn't, I wouldn't have recognized it if I did either until I was a shit show. And that's exactly how it happened was like, until I was having like mild panic attacks or anxiety attacks or whatever you want to call it. It's like, then I was like, Oh God, like this is a fucking problem. Like this until the fire is Mm -hmm. actually, happening yeah Yeah. until i was i'm not saying like get help to try to avoid the end scenario like yeah because if you get help and they end up saying like with me like yeah your your body said no thank you like i'm done Mm. i got med boarded out yeah that's what i needed so i'm not saying get help to try to prevent the further issues or Mm. avoid the outcome but at least know what's coming or know what's happening. Well, I guess that's is, that's kind of what I am saying is like, and, and I'm not saying you're getting the help to avoid the outcome of getting separated. I'm just saying like, yeah, there's there are times where it's like it's bad enough for you to to need that kind of care without being so disordered that it's time for you to go home. You know what I mean? Where like I mm-hmm. was on like the only reason I retired was cause I was at retirement already. You know what I mean? Like I would have probably gotten med boarded for all my shit at the end if I had been at 15 years or whatever. Um, but I was already like considering retiring anyway. And so like, and, and then by the time all that happened, um, I want to say, no, I was already in therapy, but then I think it was after all the family stuff happened where I was like a real shit show. As I started to kind of like get on semi-solid ground after that, I was just like, I'm fucking retiring. Like I just, yeah. I was such a mess, like physically and mentally that I was just like, I'm done, dude. I need to go home. Like the shit is fucking killing me literally and figuratively. And I'm just it's, like, yeah. it's, <laughs> it's, it's, we're done here. Like I need to go. Um, but like, I think that like, if there are people out there that like, like if I had gotten therapy when I was on my last boat, like, like we pulled in and I mean, I guess it kind of happened when it as early as it could have, because like I, we pulled in t- from the last underway and then like I went to ENT to get my deviated septum fix, which turned out to be a cancerous fucking tumor and all that other bullshit. But um, so that kind of like started that ball rolling anyway. So like, I guess I could have gotten to therapy a little earlier, but I think it would have ended in the same place. 
but there are people yeah. out there that could could get in to see mental health earlier with i mean with the obvious complication that it takes fucking forever most of the time cuz they're overwhelmed but it's just like it, you know like th- there's a point where it crosses into a problem where there's like maladaptive behavior and and all that kind of shit that isn't to the point where it's like you can't function and like you can't stay in the military anymore. And there are plenty of people out there that want to stay in that end up getting med boarded because they can't, you know what I mean? And it's like, it sounds like you were ready to go anyway, but it's like the, there's a plenty of people that aren't ready to go and get med boarded. Like I've known a bunch of people that have gotten med boarded that, did not want to get like get sent home, but they got sent home anyway. And it's like, it maybe at, for the mental health versions of that, because a lot of it's physical. Um, but for the mental health versions of that, like, would it have mattered? I don't know. It depends on the person and the, the situation. But there's there's a time I feel like where it's like you're kind of in like like if you're looking at it like a stoplight, like you're in the yellow area. You know, you haven't quite crossed into red yet, but like where you could potentially have some type of an intervention mental health wise and then um yeah that would be enough to kind of uh keep you in if that if that's what you want to do kind of thing but like it's it is really fucking difficult to recognize that for what it is if you haven't already had acute mental health issues or you're not a provider you know what i mean like it, it's to be yeah, able to if recognize it's a sudden it, onset sort of thing yeah it's, it's very confusing yeah, like, or or that's... even like for me, it, I don't think it was sudden. I just until it was acute and and dysfunctional. Yeah, I didn't that's, recognize that's what I mean by sudden. Yeah, I didn't when recognize it, when it for what it like, was. Uh, manifests itself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then you're just like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> right, right. Until you're until you get to the what the fuck moment. I I had like it retrospectively. There was a a fucking year at least where my anxiety was to the point where I probably would, I was, would be considered disordered, but I was still finding ways to function by like, uh, like just coping mechanisms like caffeine abuse and fucking like all the things that we do. Right. (laughs) But, and I would like, when we were in port, I mean, I'd come home from work and just fucking die. Like I would just go to bed and sleep for 14 fucking hours and then go back to work. Like that's all I did. Like I was useless as an adult. Uh, when I wasn't at work. So it, it was that, but that was another coping mechanism. It was just like, that's how I dealt with it. Um, but yeah, man, I, I don't know. Like it, until it got to where it was, Oh fuck. Like I have no control over my response anymore. That, that was when I ended up going to therapy and it was just like, I like it, it would have been cool to not fucking do that. <laughs> like yeah. Go earlier, but <laughs> I didn't recognize any of that for what it was until in retrospect after therapy and medication and everything else. I'm like, Oh yeah. I mean, this was an issue way before I started having anxiety attacks or whatever. But anyway, yeah, no, I've got plenty of things looking back that should have been huge red flags. But yeah. at the time I was just thinking like, yeah, I just need to decompress a little I'm bit. I'm fine. Like, <laughs> my, my worst one that I still, I feel like a total piece of shit to this day for 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 my wife was on the second submarine the the boat getting turned into a prototype yeah it was real rough at the end like yeah 12 hour yep. shift work non-stop just yep. trying to get it done to get down to south carolina mm-hmm. but i remember i came home from work after i don't even know how long we've been on those 12 hour shifts without a break but i came home and i didn't even like change on my uniform i was just like i I just want to clean the dishes that are in the sink. I'm yeah. going to do that. I'm going to zone out. I'm going to put my speaker on with some music mm-hmm. and just zombie out and clean yeah. some dishes. And I was doing that. And my wife came in the kitchen and tried to basically just like give me a little hug and say like, how was, yeah. how was work or whatever. But as soon as she put her arm around mm-hmm. me, I like, I, I didn't snap on her like screaming, but yeah. it like triggered me. And I was, yeah. I was just like, get, get off get stop like yeah yeah yeah. I, I like i didn't yell at her but i like raised my voice get and told her like stop me. touching yeah. me like get away yeah and she kind of backed up and was like all right yep. fuck you too and like yeah. went off in the other room <laughs> and i was like god all right and i went back to yep. washing dishes and then like five minutes later i was like what the fuck did i just do like yeah, yeah. i had to go sit on the couch yep. and talk to her i was like i that wasn't even me i don't yeah. know where that yeah. came from Dude, like same like i 
the only reason I started therapy was because my wife got fed up with my bullshit and was like, this is not okay. You need to fucking do something about this. And that's all it took for me because like I had, uh, like I had a, a failed marriage before her that, but it was, I got cheated on. So that's like, that's not why it, fa- it failed. Cause that chick was a cunt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just is what it is. But it like, but I, I had this fear that the Navy was going to wreck a, a, another, like it was going to take this away from me too, I guess I, for whatever yeah. reason. Um, and so I like, I had a healthy fear that I was going to lose my now wife because of Navy shit. And I was unwilling to accept that. So it was like her, all it took was her saying, like looking at me going, Hey, this is fucking bullshit. I am unwilling to accept this. You need to do something about this. And I was like, fuck, say less. Like the next day I was talking to my IDC about a mental health referral. Cause I knew I was being a fucking asshole, but like it was easy for, there was a period of time where I was in the middle of my cancer treatment too. So it's like, of course I'm a miserable asshole. Like I'm fucking getting nuked by proton radiation. I had fucking sores in my mouth and just crazy like burns and bruises and all this shit I'm throwing up and fucking. So like, of course I'm miserable, but like after I like kind of healed up from all the radiations, uh, like side effects and like just the, you know, like the shit that happens during radiation after I healed up from all that. And I just kind of had like some fatigue and stuff. I was still being a fucking asshole and she was just like, all right, like, fuck you, fuck you, dude. Like, this is, and I'm like, and and, excuses are gone. Yeah. (laughs) But but also it was, I guess it was like, I knew I was doing it and I didn't like it and I knew it wasn't like me, but I still wasn't ready to accept that I was, I had a problem until my wife said something. And then I'm like, okay, no, fuck this. Like we're fucking fixing this shit today. (laughs) And so like, that's the only, that's what got me into therapy was her just fucking drawing a red line. And I'm like, okay, no, okay. I'm on it. I'm fucking going to go fucking do this shit tomorrow. Message received loud and clear. And luckily (laughs) I got, I got in really fast too, which I still, I still suspect that my IDC like put my shit on the top of the pile or something. Which yeah. I, I'm not like, did I need it? Yes. But so did everybody else in that pile. So like, I, I, I have yeah. a feeling something, I, I don't know for sure, but I got in quick. Like it was like, I got the referral and I mean, like it might've been a month. Like, I don't See, even think it was that long. You didn't have three canceled appointments and no. have to submit nice report. <laughs> no. And I had a fucking <laughs> shit hot therapist. Like he was fucking awesome. And, I never had to switch. I never had to do anything. He was fucking great. I seen him every week for uh, a little while. And then it was every other week. But, and then when yeah. the family shit happened, it was, uh, I think it was weekly again. And then I got, I saw the psychiatrist from, uh, I'm on, I'm still on Zoloft cause I went off it when I retired. Cause apparently me and my therapist thought it was a good idea. Like I didn't just do it. We talked about it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean it, and it took a few months, but like, after, like I very slowly just started going like this and then it was like, and then I'm like, fuck, no, nope, yeah. fuck this. And so I got back on it and I'm, I'm, you know, it's just way better. And so like, I, I may try again at some point, but I'm not in a big hurry because that was a shit show. I was just like, oh, yeah. I don't want to do that again. <laughs> But uh, yeah, and I'm yeah. and I'm just giving you shit about how quickly you got your appointment, only because oh, I, know. I had a I know, no, I had another buddy uh, <sighs> at that same that second boat that started having some like real bad mental health stuff, mm-hmm. like almost same as mine. Where just out of nowhere, he was like, "I am crumbling right now. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know where this came from." He got a mental health referral. Um, that captain that was flame spraying earlier had mm-hmm. since left, but. Uh, he got a mental health referral and it was same thing as you, like within a month yeah. he was at his appointment, but he was talking to me about it. Like, Oh man, I just, I feel so bad that yeah. your, yours took so long and blah, blah, blah. I was like, yeah, it was shitty Fucking... for me, but I'm more happy for you that yeah, you got help yeah. quicker. Like and, I, and... I went through my shit. I made it through yeah. it's, I can laugh about it and right. talk shit now, but I'm, I'm happy that yeah. you got oh, yours yeah. quick. Same. Like, like I, I've never had anybody give me shit about it really. I'm just like, yeah, it's, <laughs> I just felt bad because like I hear all the horror stories like yours about like, and you see them fucking everywhere. Like on Reddit, I get, I get messages all the time and emails and shit. Um, 
but my and like my experience wasn't like that and so i'm just like i i'm like there's it, it guy, feels wrong yeah it's, it feels <laughs> dirty because i was a master chief and i'm just like either uh, some e4 yeah. put me at the top of the pile because they thought they should <laughs> or one of my but like my idc intervened and i'm just like dude that's i i don't love that and it, it it seems out of character for him so like it maybe it was just like a they thought they should get me in sooner because i'm more important which is bullshit but you know i can't fucking speak for whatever like hm3 did or, or didn't do you know like i don't fucking know but it it could have just been coincidence and i got lucky you know but i don't know i just yeah. suspect that it was somebody did something they weren't supposed to do on my uh, behalf but who as, knows? as long as you got it quick though that's all that yeah. matters i mean like, i i did hmm. i got what i needed and thank god i was in therapy when all that shit happened with my family because i fucking that would have been yo that would have been fucking yeah dark that would have been yeah. real fuck real dark if i hadn't already been in therapy um so yeah thank god but all right man uh appreciate you doing this this was fun as fuck like i'm, yeah. I'm glad like because I, I i was trying to remember i'll put the links to the original episodes in the show notes for everybody if they want to go back and listen to them or you can just scroll back um there's some of the you those episodes you have to scroll way back I oh think yeah it was like 84 or something yeah it was way back but like dude those were some of the those were some of the best episodes man like those got a shitload of fucking oh. like listens well, and views and all that <laughs> shit so yeah because i think i put them on youtube too but it's like a just like a fucking audio and there's like a little thing yeah it's like an animation it's not like a, a, a like actual video like this one will, i'll do the actual video but um and he, it did really well there too because i th I think it's just because it's a nuke thing and there's such a huge community you guys that are really engaged like yeah. reactor, <laughs> the reactors critical folks and stuff so like yeah i think it's because yeah. like one i did one with wayne a while back from from trick and that got a shitload of listens because he shared it on their pages well, which have an enormous fucking following so that's what got me into your podcast in the first place was uh trick sharing it Oh, nice. I, I wasn't into podcast, but I was like, oh, well, <laughs> if Trick's doing it, I'll give it a listen. And I just, yeah. I got sucked into it. I was just like, oh my God, there are competent people somewhere in the Navy. There <laughs> are. There are. We're fucking unicorns, but they exist. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. I mean, they're definitely out there, but yeah, they're fucking few and far between, unfortunately. But I'm working yeah. on it. I'm working on yeah, it. Fuckers. We're getting there. <laughs> just one day it'll be better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just need everybody to subscribe and decide that I'm right. And then we'll be fine. No, I'm just, I'm well, I mean, playing. I even had uh, I had two buddies that listened to your podcast before I did my first two episodes. Mm -hmm. I think I talked about this on the second episode I did, but after the first one came out, I was only sharing it with like close friends, yeah, just trying yeah. to feel out their responses. <laughs> and then I had a guy from my first boat who I hadn't talked to in like a year or two at least. Mm -hmm. Message me on Facebook out of the blue and was like, "Hey, nice job on the podcast." And yeah. I was like, oh, fuck, is my voice that recognizable? Dude, <laughs> you'd be surprised. Like, I when I was still incognito, um, I would have buddies from boats that would like, "Do you have a podcast?" Like, they would just find it on their own. <laughs> yeah. like, Do you have a podcast? And I'm like, because I was listening, and I was like, "Dude, I think I know this guy." And yeah, I'd get like messages all the time, like from from dudes that I worked with, and I was just like, "Sure." That's the. Uh, all right, I hope y'all enjoyed that. Uh, had a great time, man. Uh, again, like that. I mean, there's like another hour of content that we didn't even record uh, because we were like using names and telling specific stories and stuff. But, um, but yeah, great, great time talking to him. Uh, you'll probably see him again for sure. Like I, I, I can't imagine. I'll have to find a, a good, um, like a good platform for that. But uh, I think it'll be, I think it'll be, an, it, and maybe even just like the the separation series or something like that. I don't know. Well, we'll find some. But uh, it's always fun to, to catch up with people that you haven't talked to in a while, just generally. But then, like, for me, it's always neat to, like, somebody I've talked to, like, podcast-wise, like, a, a long time ago. And just to see, you know, like, how either their career has progressed or life after the Navy, what like, what's that like and, and all that kind of stuff. So it's always fun to kind of bring back somebody that has that was on a long time ago and see what's changed and, you know, what they've learned along, you know the along the way through through life as it progresses and stuff so um it's the the mental health I, we talked a little bit about it i want to say i don't know if i was recording or not but 
about the like research project thing like it's still on my life's to-do list uh i was i was looking at doing uh like a research project almost like investigative journalism style series of podcasts i still want to do it eventually um but right now it's like i'm transitioning a lot still like i'm starting a job on monday that kind of happened quickly and by accident <laughs> shout out to my old boss that called me with a sweet new job um but yeah it's like I'm, I'm doing that and i'm gonna have to be like training for a while where i'm actually showing up and then i'll be transitioning to like work from home and gonna have to figure out that workflow and and see what that's like and see how to how i'm gonna fit all the podcast stuff in um and how much i'm gonna be able to do but it's on my life to do list i still i still have a goal of doing it someday but anyway uh, I just wanted to explain that in the event that I, I think I mentioned it while we were recording, but I definitely still want to do that. Uh, and just like maybe a couple times a year, just do like do that type of a project, but do it on like a different topic. Um, but we'll see. I don't know. Like, I don't know when that's going to happen. Just like I don't know when a lot of other stuff's going to happen. So we'll see. But with that, if you need anything from us, hit us up. Don't give up the show podcast at gmail.com. You can Facebook message us. Don't give up the show podcast. You can DM us on Instagram, Reddit, or Discord at DGUTS Podcast. If you want to support us, you can go to DGUTSPodcast.com. There's a donate button in the upper right-hand corner of the website. Or you can go to Don't Give Up the Ship Apparel. That's DGUTSApparel.com. Get yourself some Naval Pride and Heritage gear you'll actually wear in public. It's all dope, I promise. Go check it out. Uh, and then you can go to Patreon.com slash Podcast. Pick one of the five tiers. Become a member today. Uh, becoming a patron is a great way to support. Uh, it's as low as five bucks a month, which is, I mean, like, let's be honest. It's like a, a latte. If, if that now, it, I mean, I've sometimes those things are like eight bucks. It's nuts, but like, you know, buy me a latte. I'm just saying, buy me a coffee. <laughs> That's like a, a thing. I think there's a, like an actual support mechanism for online stuff like YouTube or something where you, it's called buy me a coffee. But in this case it's Patreon, but you would only be buying me a coffee once a month because it's only five bucks. So that's a really great way to do it if you don't want to, you know, spend a bunch of money on like apparel and stickers and stuff. Uh, or if, you know, you don't want to donate for nothing, like you can get a bunch of cool perks. You get a stick, you get a sticker pack, you get a bunch of other stuff depending on the tier you sign up for. So go check it out. It's a really great way to support the platform and we really appreciate it. If you can't spend any money, no big deal. Uh, there's lots of, of non-monetary ways to support us. Uh, like like share subscribe and review on all the platforms for all the things that you consume the podcast on like itunes or spotify or uh, subscribe and share the youtube content uh, um tag your friends follow us on social media whatever like send them the link uh it all helps and it's all free whatever is most convenient for you uh we really appreciate it and that's it that's what i got for you today thank you so much for listening and don't give up the ship Hey, shout out to all our level five patrons, Victoria Livingood, William McIver, and Mark Gallagos, to all our other patrons. We really appreciate your support. Helps to pay all the bills, expand the platform, and we couldn't do it without you. Thank you so much. Please hit the like button, drop a comment down below on what you thought, and subscribe to the channel.